The rugged, beautiful Western Cape on a sunny day that was. Uh, today it is very, very different. Welcome to Lawrenceford Wine Estate for stage six of the 2023 Absa Cape Epic. Shrouded in cloud and it is uh, very, very wet indeed. The uh, Western Cape is the Cape of Storms today. No question about it. Plenty of wind and uh, conditions well, they're always tough at the Absa Cape Epic, particularly though today in uh, much as they go up to the top of the mountains and it is raining and uh, the roads and trails are very, very muddy. Annika Langfell and Neil Gardner alongside me here. This is a day uh, we feel quite comfortable inside here, but for the riders out there, it is going to be one true test coming so uh, at the end of the week, Annika. Yeah, definitely. By now, you almost, when you go down and, and chat with the riders, uh, you see a lot of uh, so-called zombie faces. <laughs> People are just really looking forward to, to uh, yeah, ending the race and, you know, just getting through these last uh, couple of stage, uh, stages. But we've got a race on our hands, which is uh, fantastic. And in these sort of conditions, it uh, really does uh, uh, create a, a real dynamic today, Neil. Well, the overall has shifted. Uh, every day we've seen a bit of a shift and uh, the, just the dynamics have changed. And um, if you look at the, the time gaps, uh, it's just, it, it's moving around all the time. We had uh, really five teams in contention after stage three. It, tum it kind of changed into four as we uh, hit the time trial stage four. And now we're really down to three teams who have who got every chance of winning each of those three teams. They are the Obier, yeah, Obier Liet, uh, Speed Company, Scott Sram and Specialized uh, uh, Toyota Specialized at 91 and of course in the women's race there's a dynamic there as well because uh, things could well change today. But let's reflect on uh, yesterday's stage, the transition stage, the Queen stage as they made the way from Oak Valley to Lawrenceford. The 19th edition of the Absa Cape Epic is one of the most competitive ever. The world's premier mountain bike stage race attracts the best in the world as well as serious amateurs. The riders compete in teams of two and must complete the 648 kilometer course and climb over 15 and a half thousand meters together. Set in South Africa's rugged Western Cape, the conditions have been mixed this year and today's stage five is no exception. The riders experience four seasons in one day. Today is day six of racing and it's stage five, the toughest of this year's Cape Epic, also known as the Queen Stage. The course is a transitional one from Oak Valley to Lawrenceford Wine Estate, and it's a tough one. The legendary Grunlandberg is the most feared part of the whole race. It's rocky, rough, and today, extra slippery. It's a brutal 102 kilometers with 2,450 meters of climbing. On the start line, Team Toyota Specialized 91, Matt Beers and Chris Blevins in third overall. In second, defending champions are Bea Liet Speed Company, Gail Gega and Lucas Baum. And just one minute and 11 seconds into the lead are Scott Sram MTB Racing, two-time winner and 2016 Olympic champion Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnecht. The start gun goes and it's a damn start to the day. The riders leave Oak Valley for the last time and into the misty South African mountains. The atmosphere is foreboding as this will be a defining stage for the overall classification. Eger and Baum have the bit between their teeth today after being outmaneuvered in the sprints. On the last two stages, they're leaving nothing to chance and make a break on the second big climb about 30 kilometers into the race. In the chase group, we see Beers and Blevins along with the yellow jersey leaders Schurter and Frischnecht. And in the mix at the sharp end today are some new faces for this year's race, Singer Racing, the German duo of Simon Stiebjan and Martin Fry. They have 11 Cape Epic finishes between them and multiple wins. Fry, though, is recovering from an illness and seems to be finding form. The challenge of the Grunenberg terrain is magnified by the rainfall and it takes its toll, not only on the riders, but also the equipment. Water, gravel, sand and rocks all find their way into the suspension, gears, brakes, shoes and even coat their glasses. But it doesn't seem to be damping the pace of Eger and Baum. They are one minute in the lead and threatening the yellow leader's jersey. It seems that nothing can stop them at this pace, although a quick cool down swim does cost a few seconds. By the 58 kilometer mark, they finally go into the virtual leader's jersey and smell victory on stage five. They're only halfway into the stage, but are executing their plan to perfection. Get out in front and put the yellow jersey under pressure. Scott's Ram MTB Racing are working with Toyota Specialized 91 to limit the damage of Egger and Baum. Singer Racing managed to hang on to the back of the pack and have designs on a podium finish. They are no threat in the overall, and after five days of illness, it's good to see them in the mix today. 
defending champions Lucas Baum and Georg Eger of Team Obeya Liet Speed Company win the Queen stage in 4 hours, 13 minutes and 46 seconds. It's their first stage win in this year's race and they are now the new race leaders with two more days to go. Simon Steve Jun and Martin Fry of Team Singer Racing finished 2 minutes and 32 seconds behind in second place. A great achievement for the German duo and their first podium finish this year. Scott Ram, MTB Racing's Nino Schurter and Andri Frischnick crossed the finish line 2 minutes and 40 seconds after the winners to take third. However, it's a bittersweet success as they lose their yellow leaders' jerseys ahead of stage six. The podium sees two all-German pairs on top, with Georg Eger and Lukas Baum ahead of Simon Stiebjan and Martin Frey, and the Swiss Nino Schurter and Andri Frischnick in third. Timo Bayer led Speed Company become the new race leaders with a lead of 1 minute and 29 seconds over Scott's Ram MTV Racing. On the women's elite start line, Efficient Infinity ensure with Kim Lacourt and Vera Loza third in the overall. In second, we have 91 Songo Specialized with defending champion Sofia Gomez Viafan and Katharina Nash. And the leaders by almost 11 minutes, the South African duo of Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill for E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. As the gun goes on stage five for the CM.com Elite Women's category, the significance of this stage shrouds the start line like the mist on Hudlandberg. The rain is eased but not yet abated, so the technical trails of this Queen stage will be treacherous. This is not a day to ride recklessly. Disaster strikes in the first three kilometers. The pack head out into the wilderness, and it's the first big water obstacle that catches Vera Loss out. She gets caught out in the deep water, and Monica Calderon of Canada Vas Arabe runs into the back of her. In the crash, Loss's shoe suffers some damage. Her closure system loses its tightening dial. She has to resort to duct tape for the time being. As the top teams hit the first climb at Tierkop, cracks are showing in the 91 Songo Specialized team. Katharina Nash has been struggling for the past three days and the damage has taken its toll. They are dropped and the elastic keeps stretching until it snaps. Just 25 kilometers into the race, Efficient Infinity and Sure make their move. They're on the hunt for second place in the overall and have the taste for a stage win. The orange leaders, Lil and Wakefield, let them go as Wakefield is finally having a down day. They have been almost bulletproof thus far for this year's Cape Epic. By the 58 kilometer time check, Efficient Infinity and Sure are going so well they move from third to virtual second in the overall. Lil and Wakefield have over 10 minutes as a buffer, so are not too concerned about the time. However, Wakefield's day isn't getting any better, but in true mountain biking spirit, she gets a helping hand from Lil. Efficient Infinity Insure with Kim Lacourt and Vera Loza cross the line after a huge day in the saddle. Almost 5 hours and 24 minutes of hard racing for a well-deserved win. South African duo of Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill of e4.net Seattle Coffee Co. cross the line in second. Canada Vas Arabe, Greta Steinberg and Monica Calderon cross the line for their first ever podium at the Absa Cape Epic. Limping across the line in fourth, 91 Songo Specialized, Sofia gomez Viafan and Katharina Nash having another tough day as they concede their second place in the overall. On the podium, some new faces of Canadel Vas Arabe with Goethe Sinberg and Monica Calderon. In second, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill for e4.net Seattle Coffee Co. And a second consecutive win for Kim Lacourt and Viera Lossa from Efficient Infinity Insure. Lil and Wakefield remain in the Orange Leaders jerseys for stage six and have almost 14 minutes to play with. Today is Grunenberg Day. Um, I think anyone who's done the Epic a couple times has been has had this mountain thrown at them. I'm gonna go, go, go. I'm gonna...
the drama that was the Queen stage of the Absa Cape Epic Stage 5 coming to Lawrenceford and this is how it, the cards fell once that stage was complete. A change in the yellow jerseys as Nino Schurter and uh, Thomas Frischnitt handed the jerseys to Gail Gega and Lucas Baum of Bayer Speed Company wearing yellow for the first time despite being the defending champions. They won that uh, last year on the final stage so weren't able to ride in yellow. But today they will ride in yellow here at Lonesford for the very first time. Beers and Blevins, well, they chewed a little bit of time back as well. Now in third place, seven minutes and eight seconds down. They may well be eyeing a place a little higher than that if Schurter and Frischnick uh, show frailty today. Ravenstein and Alleman were in the top uh, three. They are now 23 minutes down. Uh, Seervolt and Stasek are hanging tough. They've had a, a tough week, the Canyon North Wave pair, but are in fifth place, 38 down. And Canada Vassarabe, Bomata and Munoz Moreno are getting stronger and stronger as the week progresses. Basin Miller still in the Absa African jersey as Paiga Eurostil continue to dominate that category. And they're the only African team inside the top 10. Well, there was a change in the uh, CM.com women's uh, general classification yesterday because going into the day, Gomez, Viafan and Nash were in uh, second place, but another fantastic ride by Kim Lacorte and Vera Lossa of Efficient Infinity Insure vaulted them into uh, second place and second place by 15 minutes and they are now a very very strong uh, uh, strongly eyeing out the uh, CM.com orange jerseys why not that's why they're here Wakefield and Lil have those jerseys at the moment e for Donetsk uh, Seattle Coffee Co with a 13 minute and 53 second lead uh, they may go in today feeling going into today's stage feeling that that's uh, only about a five minute lead uh, but that's the nature of this race uh, it gets uh, harder and harder as the week goes on Steinberg and Calderon had an excellent day yesterday finishing on the podium they are way off on general classification but they will be delighted with that and will look for another strong performance on uh, the uh, stage number six here at Lawrence for today keep it green uh, third of the African teams uh, in that Absa African uh, jersey race. So today's race here, stage six around Lawrenceford, for the first time outside of a prologue and a time trial, the entire stage takes place on one landowner's property. Lawrenceford estate has some incredible trails, some uh, of the oldest trails in the Western Cape in, in various parts and some very new trails as well. And lots of fire road as they make their way up to the saddle, which is there and then around the deep end of this uh, valley in the Helderberg Basin with the uh, Yonkers of just over the edge of the mountain here. Drix Drag, Hendrika Berger has been working hard here, putting this all together. And uh, it has changed a little. We'll look at this now. Uh, but there have been changes made due to the conditions out uh, on the course and in the, uh, the uh, atmospheric conditions. So they'll make their way back towards or Zululand is uh, so called because it's uh, the scene of a film set uh, that's being shot uh, here in the uh, valley. To the tough section is graveyard, a gnarly uh, descent and uh, more single track. It is uh, heavily laden with single track today's uh, course and then they flow down to uh, the bottom and into the finish here at Lawrenceville. So 78 kilometers it was uh, due to be. It has been reduced by five kilometers due to the uh, uh, inclement weather and uh, so the four wheels it is a tough stage but a uh, little bit shorter 72 73 kilometers today and a few of the climbs taken out well we've still got uh, four major obstacles and we we heard we saw the drex drag and the climb up to hypermotion the zululand climb and the climb up to young young bafana and uh, characterized by the descents the descents off those climbs most of those climbs are characterized by some beautiful single track sections uh, it won't necessarily be a play day, especially for the riders at the front. We've seen three major, three teams in major contention in the men's category, and uh, there is certainly a battle at the sharp end of the field in the women's category too. Right uh, now, let's uh, hear from uh, some of the leading contenders going into today's uh, race. It was uh, yeah cold and wet on the start line, so the USA uh, men and women were. A little shy to get down to the start anything other than just a couple of seconds before they were called up the top 10 in each category called up and uh, load at the front of the shoot and that's when we try and uh, have a word with them we did uh, our best this morning and Sophia. well stupid questions how are the legs uh, at this point 
I mean, I'm feeling pretty good. How are your legs? Ah, <laughs> uh, legs are feeling fine. Legs are good, yeah. And today, so a rather shorter stage. Um, how are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it was 78 originally, shortened by 5k on a climb. Uh, but the weather is crazy, so uh, it might be short in distance, but I think it's still going to be a pretty big day. And kind of what are the tactics uh, for the day? I think similar, you know, just keep an eye on the front and see what we can do. So, yeah. Well, all the best out there. Thank you. <laughs> Candace and Amy, what a week it's been. How are you looking forward to it today? Today is going to be fun for us. Um, I think we are good in bad weather and in the slippery, the trails are going to be nice and wild and slippery and crazy. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. So, a slightly shorter stage uh, today, is that uh, good for you or would you have preferred it longer? I think it depends on how we're feeling out there. Obviously, if we're feeling good, then you want a longer stage and make more time. But if you're having a bad day, then it's, it's good that it's shorter. So, we're pretty much ready for anything that comes. And I assume by now you have your like main focus on maintaining the jerseys. Did you expect it to be like this at this point? Yeah, it's hard to say what, what we expect. I think we've been through so much this week. Um, obviously that day one was just massive in every way. And yeah, I'm really proud of us for managing to hold on to the jersey for this long and hope we can pull through. And how do you expect the dynamics to be out there today? We know that uh, Vera and Kim, they are really going for it at the moment. Are you expecting to see fireworks from them again? Yes, for sure they're going to try. I, I know them. I know them very well. And they are also fighters, just like us. And that's what brings this awesome racing. All the best out there today. Thanks. Thanks, Annika. Yeah, the thoughts of Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill, and before them, uh, Katharina Nash and uh, Sofia Gomez via fan. I'm afraid the uh, riders were rushing in to uh, get into the start and spend as little time in these conditions because they're going to spend a lot of time out there today. The weather around 16 degrees, rain, wind is the big factor today. Uh, yes, the surface is going to be so muddy, the clay is going to be very, very slippery. The mindset going into today's. Uh, uh, you know, the legs are one thing, but uh, the mindset when you wake up on day uh, seven of eight and you look at this weather today, Annika. Well, like some of the women they were referring to, it really all depends on how you how you feel and kind of where, I mean, wh what your tactics for the race are. Um, if you want to go on the, in the attack and try to gain as much time and you're feeling good, of course you would rather want a little bit of a, a longer, harder stage, but I'm sure that a lot of riders are happy that it's uh, in these conditions a little bit shorter. Yeah. A little bit shorter will be greeted with some relief. So the uh, start this morning, 7 a.m. this morning, they charged off the line. It was barely light as they headed off and immediately to the front. Nino Schurte, the yellow jerseys. We must get used to them today because it's the first time we're seeing them in the yellow jerseys of Bear Lit Speed Company and then specialized at 91 uh, uh, behind them. And uh, just a little problem there already evident on this climb. The pace was ferocious very early on yeah it, i mean really <laughs> they know that it's a shorter stage and i know that the the, the team uh, 91 uh, specialized toyota they would have preferred today to be longer because the more time they have at hand yeah the the more time they have to to try to you know gain time of their on their rivals and they know that Speed Company are not going to hold back at any point. Well, the picture is of barely at uh, Speed Company have 1 minute and 29 over Scott and 7.08 over sp uh, the Toyota Specialized 91 team. These are the other batches leaving this morning um, and they went all the way around to 8.10 8, uh, this morning. So uh, batches leaving the uh, start. 5 minutes and 39 between Scott and uh, the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 and there's every chance that that could uh, be clawed back certainly because Beers and Blevins are highly motivated. They certainly are highly motivated and uh, even if they're motivated to move up to second spot, that 5.39 gap between Toyota Specialized 91 and Scott SRAM, we saw vulnerable uh, under Frischnick uh, to a point, I mean vulnerable at a very high level of course, but uh, 5.39 is, is quite a lot of time but on a day like today, with the conditions we've seen, it uh, could be wiped out pretty quickly. But uh, we're definitely seeing the dominance of uh, Orbia Liet Speed Company. And yesterday, 
We've uh, we saw them on the attack. In fact, all week we've saw, seen them on the attack, and in fact, in 2022, on the attack. And we posed the question <laughs> yesterday, whether or not having that uh, yellow jersey, which they have yet uh, until today yet to wear in a stage, and they, of course, last year won uh, the race and never wore it, only wore it on stage. But uh, we posed the question: Would they be on the defence? Would they change their style? Would they change their mindset from uh, from attack to defence of that yellow? And uh, we'll, the answer will lie today. It lie certainly today. will, yeah. Um, only a minute and 29. So this is uh, the group, I think we can see a, a yellow jersey. Yes, Matt Beers up there, the, the Canyon North wave there. Uh, but only, yep, they're both there. The two uh, Scott Stram riders are in there as well. But uh, at the back here, Andreas Sevold, the uh, German champion's colors. Uh, yeah, we've just got to <laughs> get used to those yellow jerseys on our beer. Uh, our beer uh, sh uh, shoulders. And then uh, Team Bulls were chasing hard. Alban Lecart and Axel Udel Cortina, his young French partner. And enjoying these conditions. He's a hard man, Alban Lecart, and uh, perhaps this is an opportunity for him to uh, make a little uh, charge. So this was evidence that uh, Andre Fischnecht was suffering very early on. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did uh, see throughout uh, this week th that he would have some moments uh, where he would be struggling quite badly, and it seems like today uh, is another day where he's not 100 per percent uh, on his maximum. You can see that uh, you know Schroeder has really changed his mindset and the whole approach, and he's now driving back to to help out uh, uh, Andre and kind of you know accept him, accepting the fact that they are not maybe not really the strongest team in this race and uh, yeah they will have to yeah be careful about you know getting Andre through these coming days and uh, ride as strong as possible it's testament to the uh, the speed at which the speed company racing the uh, now known as Orbia Liet speed company just how they've attacked this race just relentlessly ripped it to shreds and uh, that, that's been the theme you know a year ago uh, we saw them there here and we were sort of really unaware of, of what they were bringing to the party. Um, it didn't take too long uh, to see what they were bringing to the party. They were on the podium at the uh, prologue. But still, uh, they, were, they weren't the high profile uh, teams uh, like the, the specialized teams, like the Scott teams. And uh, they kept attacking and kept attacking and thrust themselves, charged into, into contention and, uh, and eventually won it. And that's what they're doing today. And uh, there's no reason to believe they won't attack just as uh, ferociously today to consolidate their hold on those yellow jerseys. They were absolutely delighted to wear those yellow jerseys and they had come prepared to wear them as well uh, with uh, a pair of uh, shorts each with uh, yellow uh, bra brand on it on the uh, bottom of the shorts and yellow socks as well. So uh, they've come prepared. That speaks of a positive mindset for sure. And bold thinking from the uh, German pair. It's, uh, it's quite a thing to have, uh, have a, a set of kit made in yellow uh, with uh, obviously they have ambitions for yellow but it's one thing going to all the trouble to make a special set of kit. We saw it in the past with, uh, with the specialized team, the specialized factory racing team with the, the likes of Cool Harvey and Christoph Sazer who kind of, I guess they knew they would hit, they would um, get into yellow but with the competitive nature of the Absa Cape Epic these days in the modern era of the race, there are no guarantees and it is, uh, evidenced by the fact that there are just so many top teams in contention. The field is so dense and right up until today, the general classification, there's three teams very much in contention for overall. And it's, uh, it's the, the racing is going to play out today, no doubt, with Orbia Liet Speed Company, Toyota Specialized 91, and we've seen Scott Sram still within seven minutes of each other. Meanwhile, we're watching uh, the uh, batters leave this morning uh, after 7 o'clock, of course, when the uh, elite batch uh, left. So uh, the uh, batters rolled away from the start line. The uh, uh, amateur teams and amateur riders getting closer to reaching their goal of uh, Val de V. Many have fallen uh, by the wayside, but many more are continuing to ride, including our last lines, I can tell you. Mike Dix, Nixon and William Simpson are still going strong. Uh, Mike, of course, is one of those three last lines. Uh, Hanla Stain and Ingrid Avedon are continuing on very nicely indeed. And John Gale has lost his partner. He's the other of the three 
last lines. He is still going strong though. He's riding uh, as an individual finisher. Yesterday he finished uh, as an individual finisher, sadly, but he's still going. And should he finish uh, uh, in time, he will be uh, still in contention as a last line. So two more days for this uh, trio of riders who've ridden every single stage of all 18 uh, Absa Cape Epics so far. Quite remarkable. So these conditions, look at this on the descent and then up uh, high on the uh, slopes of the Hildeberg Mountains. It is a two-team uh, gr lead group now. It is Obeliet Speed Company and uh, the Toyota Specialized 91 uh, team. And this was on the Drex drag. This is almost at the 30 kilometer mark or today because of the foreshortened route. It's the uh, right about the 25 kilometer mark. It was a big attack and the Orbia Lee at Speed Company leading the pace, looking to put more time into Scott's Ram. They sensed weakness with Andre Freshnecht off the back. And uh, one of the uh, key things is all about racing instinct and the killer instinct that is required to race at the front end of the field, to succeed at the front end of the field. No doubt whatsoever that uh, Lucas Baum and George Egger have that killer instinct and hanging on admirably are the pairing of Beers and Blevins. But the pace is Definitely set by George Egger on the front. It's characterized. We'll be able to spot him easily because he's wearing the white helmet. His partner, Lucas Baum, is wearing the darker colored helmet. But just look at the ground and the conditions here. You can see the wind is really picking up now. And the ground, because of all the rain and the mud, is so soft. And it's really like it's almost like it's dragging the energy and the speed out of, uh, of your bike. So conditions really play a big role today. And already at this point in the race, uh, well before the 30 kilometer mark, we're seeing a gap quite far back, 45 seconds already to the Willia Pirelli team and uh, the Bulls Mavericks on a much better day today, riding together with Canyon Northwave and the resurgent team, of the uh, certainly in the last, the latter half of the race, Canadel Vas Arabe, we've seen it both in the women's and in the men's categories, Canadel Vas Arabe outfit are having a great day out. Well, the uh, pressure is being applied by uh, Orbea, the speed company in that uh, lead group there, no question about it. And you even there saw uh, the uh, Toyota Specialized 91, Matt Beers was sitting on the back, they hanging in, but you know, there was definitely a, a bit of heat on him. Definitely. And we were wondering whether speed company would kind of change the tactics a little bit, maybe just sit up and, and way to to put on the pressure towards the end of the stage but i feel like you know they just feel the most comfortable sticking to the same plan and the ra same race strategy uh, every single day and that means you know not hold back at the beginning just really attacking from the from the very start well now they go to the blevins is clearly feeling pretty good uh, it, it, by the judging by the way he's positioning mm. Yeah, we know that he, he had a really bad day on uh, on the first stage where he just completely, yeah, almost like blew up. They lost almost, uh, I think it was around seven, eight minutes on that first day. And then it's quite a lot. And they, they had a lot of stage wins uh, throughout the, the week uh, ever since. And we did hear from... Uh, from Chris Blevins that he was feeling, he had some days where he just felt flying. So shame for them that they had to go through that dark, dark uh, stage one, because I mean, it would have been a very different race if it uh, weren't for that. But that's that's part of the game. It's part of the nature of this uh, this beast, this uh, Absa Cape Epic. And the riders, they know it. And um, yeah, it's just how it is. Yeah, at some stage over the eight days, you're putting yourself through such extreme, uh, conditions your body is uh, at its uh, limit on most days it's not really in, in many ways uh, they're all pretty well matched on the bike it's what happens off the bike how you recover how you able to uh, get your body and your mind get the nutrition and get enough rest get off your legs uh, to prepare for the next day out there and that's the, uh, the importance that's quite often what differentiates these uh, these teams at the end of the day yeah definitely and uh, these top teams, they have the, the best possible uh, support. And um, I know for, for example, the Toyota Specialized 91 uh, team here, um, they're actually based uh, now no longer in the camper vans, but at a guest house. They really 
of course, when it comes to logistics, it makes it a little bit more complicated, but they have the comfort of actually sleeping in a proper bed. And for the mechanics, it's just easier not to having to work on the bikes on a, in the mud and in, in the tent and in the wind the, here at the, the venue. So definitely it's a different thing to be on one of the bigger teams and have a different uh, setup. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, when you're racing at the sharp end of the field, it also comes with a little bit more pressure, you know, to perform. Absolutely, yeah. Expectation and uh, uh, reputation and do all that matter. Whoops, just swinging a little wide. Now, this is uh, the Toyota Specialized 91 and the Orbea uh, Liet Speed Company. And uh, Scott's Ram off the back here. So for the uh, beers Blevins combination, an opportunity to put a little bit of pressure, not only obviously on the uh, race leaders, but uh, their closest rivals are Scott's Ram, five minutes and 39 back, as uh, Annika was alluding to a little bit earlier. Uh, th they want a longer stage so they can put uh, have as much opportunity to put as much time as they can into this pair. But uh, it's not quite that way, 73 kilometers, but it does set up for, for next week. You, you, you say it's a pity, it is certainly a pity from a specialized perspective that they had those issues earlier this week but it certainly set up the, the back end of the week with them finding a bit of form and going hard uh, in the middle and the end of the week. As uh, Nino Schurter, look at him, relentless. He is uh, powering away as uh, the Beers and Blevins at the moment, just setting the pace on the steep, rugged climbs in the most uh, atrocious conditions, but they are making it look uh, unbelievable. These guys are quite phenomenal. There's the... Uh, next group of uh, riders and uh, in their Canyon North Wave as well as the Bulls Mavericks and also the I think it's the, the William Pirelli and the Cannondale, Cannondale uh, yeah. Arab Bay so clearly we see a different dynamic uh, outside of the top three four on GC some teams are really uh, going strong here towards the end of the week uh, it's, it's been that sort of week hasn't it with the midweek time trial Fabian Rabensteiner there on the, the front. This was a look uh, at the, uh, the CM.com women's race heading off. And uh, here, again, change yesterday. Sofia Gomez, Viafana, and Catherine Nash losing their position in the uh, overall standing. So it's, it's going to be another day uh, where we'll be looking at how they go and, of course, how Amy Wakefield and uh, Candace Little handle the, the situation. There's no question the bodies are fatiguing and uh, they are starting to... Uh, uh, feel the real stress all these riders of riding uh, at on the limit for for the week well we saw from the recap of yesterday Amy Wakefield uh, admitted to herself that she had a terrible day her body felt completely blocked she said and uh, Candace Law the uh, best partner in the world I think she was saying so nursed her through the day uh, all was not lost they uh, still managed to um, Really, they still hold a comfortable lead on the overall general classification. And uh, just to give you an idea of how big that, uh, that that buffer is that they have, luckily their hard work over the uh, over the week has afforded them a 13 minute and 53 second advantage on overall GC after the bad day that Amy Wakefield had yesterday going to today's stage. Their job is, they really have one job only, and that's to make sure they don't lose too much time to Kim Lacourt and Vera Lawser. Yes. Who is on a on a really on a on a on a high here towards the end of the week? Um, if you do a quick calculations, 13 minutes 53 seconds uh, to Amy Wakefield and Candice Lil. If they can go on the attack early on and gain, you know, six seven minutes every single day, which I mean, if if Amy is uh, really struggling and uh, not feeling good. I would say it's unlikely, but it will take for some really aggressive uh, racing uh, straight from the start gun. And we saw, we, you spoke, Annika, you spoke today about the the, the 71 kilometer stage that is not a lot of time. There's a, the, the stages are shorter in the latter half of the week and l less opportunity to uh, to gain large tracks of time. Yeah, that's a uh, that's what we're dealing with and um, so they really need to you know they had to like attack from the very start and then it's uh, it's not unlikely but it's not easy because we know Amy Wakefield and Candice Lil they are masters when it comes to managing the energy and being smart and uh, you know really taking the race into their hands so um, not an easy task uh, at all you can see here that the as true to the script as if we uh, wrote it ourselves, is that on the attack, 
Vero Lorza, Kimlecourt. Kimlecourt leading the field, but able to hang on and stay in touch. Are the three leading teams on overall general classification. The uh, CM.com race leaders, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lil, hanging on to the back wheels of Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt. Also hanging in there are the uh, Toyota 91 Specialized, uh, the 91 Songo Specialized team. And uh, it's still all to play for, for the for the stage that's coming. Definitely, but uh, we can see that uh, Katarina Nash is uh, truly starting to feel the impact of a long, long, long week. But they maintain the contact with the two teams ahead of them, and that's a good sign. You want that for at least at lo as long as possible. Drop off uh, the uh, top of the mountain and onto the first bit of single track as they head down uh, the mountain uh, for the first time. They'll be going up and down these uh, mountain slopes on uh, Lawrenceford Estate uh, throughout the day. That's what this stage is about. So much single track and lots of forest road to link these sections uh, with. And uh, they'll take, <laughs> take uh, uh, every opportunity to enjoy these downhills and the, and the single tracks. They really are sensational. It's rained. I mean, it's difficult to know what it's, uh, what the, uh, the surfaces are like up there. We've seen on the flatter sections, there's a lot of uh, uh, water lying on the road. But on the single tracks, uh, that have been uh, manicured and uh, perhaps a little bit of drainage. They could be very tacky, but uh, here's an e again evidence of what you were saying a little bit earlier. Katharina Nash again struggling today. Yeah, it's clear that um, you know she's every single day she's truly emptying her batteries um, day in day day out, and at the end of the week it's uh, it's all accumulating, and uh, yeah, she's uh, really getting a, a good taste what the EPSA uh, Kebebik is all about. Well, there we go. This is Canada Vas Sarabe, who had a great day yesterday, and uh, they have just passed again. So I uh, actually think it was for some of the amateurs, oh. men, without being 100% oh, okay. sure. Okay, here we go. And all together doing the job that they were meant to do today. And uh, Amy Wakefield, Candice Lil sticking to the back wheels of the aggressive and attacking team of Kim Lacourt and Vera Lorza. But just look at the, the conditions here. You can see Amy Wakefield, she was just reaching down to her rear wheel. Uh, actually, in these conditions, when it's so wet, the least, the, the last thing you want uh, to happen is actually for the rain to stop. Uh, because if the rain stops, uh, you can see that the clay, the mud, the soil, the dirt will start to be super heavy and super sticky. And it can actually build up between your wheel, uh, the tire, the rear tire and the frame. and uh, causing a lot of trouble for the, the wheels to actually spin. And that's why we saw Amy Wakefield here just reaching down and trying to clear, to get some clearance around her, her tire. So the rain performs a purpose, which is to wash the bike exactly. clean to, to a point. And even, you know, if there's uh, puddles of water on, on the, the course, it, riders would, uh, would actually, you know, normally you would try to avoid the water, but they would maybe even aim for the puddles in order for, you know, to, to I wouldn't say wash, but just kind of to dissolve the 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 heavy mud a little bit on the bikes rinse it off uh, for a moment so that's what's all about the experience of riding a race like us with um, so such a diverse range of uh, trail surfaces we see the rocks we see sand and uh, now of course that clay mud that uh, can play a major role in uh, just uh, keeping the equipment to looking after the equipment it's one of the most important things obviously firepower and uh, and form is soup is is primary there are tactics but just being able to manage the equipment is a skill in itself that requires experience and just the riders showing here that they uh, really they seem to be coping fine with the uh, conditions now but it's a little split here the uh, we saw in that previous uh, shot and now the, the Vera Loss and Kim Lacourt have opened the taps a little on this climb and have put a bit of a gap into uh, Amy and Candice yeah, we did, we did uh, expect this to happen, but it looks like, you know, it's a yo-yo effect. Yeah. It's the, the elastic is constantly being stretched, and uh, for a moment there it looked like uh, it had snapped, but we can see that Amy Wakefield and Candice Lil, uh, they have been able to, to, to catch up with them again. So everything is still uh, in control. This c these conditions, I mean, look at the water lying on these flat sections. It is treacherous and those gullies and ruts that uh, are formed when the water rushes down the mountainside. They've got to be extra cautious here. It can take uh, one little uh, 
Uh, error, one mistake, and uh, it can all fall apart for any of these teams. So they drop into the uh, single trail again with the racing men, the elite men, the yellow jerseys, Gael Gregor and Lucas Baum uh, heading down behind uh, Blevins and Beers at this stage. I love these trails. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, now this is uh, a real problem for the Egger-Baum combination. Baum has uh, a problem with his derailleur. Or the chain. Oh, this is bad news for the team. They got some wire. Looks like they got some wire stuck in that rear derailleur, which is absolutely disastrous. These team, they only came with the. With it was Egger and Baum who came to the race. They don't have that ever present backup team that uh, some of the other bigger outfits can afford. Uh, the, uh, just the luxury of being able to have. Uh, so, but that, to that rear derailleur is completely broken. Yeah, they will have to get to the tech zone as soon as possible. And uh, they'll have to manage that. Uh, that damage, we need to go back to the, we need to head to the tech zone and get assistance as soon as they possibly can. This is really bad news for them. It actually looked like, you know, the top pulley wheel on the rear derailleur was gone. This just shows, you know, nothing is ever for sure in this race. Everything can go wrong in a, yeah, glimpse of an eye. And now he's, it almost looks like he's taking the chain completely off. It could be that he would try to, Oh, this is so bad this news. Is, oh. Really bad news. And actually, what they can do here is take the derailleur completely off and maybe shorten the chain so he would uh, almost like ride the bike as a single speed. But this is bad, bad, bad M news. Major drama. This is uh, an absolute nightmare for the uh, yellow jerseys, uh, Gaur Gega and Lucas Baum. And uh, they are having to make all manner of uh, plans here on their their bikes. This is uh, the Absa Cape Epic, and this is the drama that can unfold here. They finally get it sorted, and uh, Lucas Baum will remount. And uh, these are the two men in the lead on the stage now. Chris Blevins and uh, Matt Beers. What drama unfolding here at the Absa Cape Epic on uh, the penultimate day. It uh, doesn't stop. We saw on uh, Lucas Baum's bike, the derailleur completely broken. They would have had to have gone back to the tech zone and uh, remove, a, they would have taken a new derailleur from their box. They get professional riders get allocated a box at each of the tech zones. And in that box was clearly, luckily they had a rear derailleur, a spare one and a spare chain. And just showing composure, having made a complete replacement of, uh, of a derailleur and the chain. Yeah, just imagine the amount of time you have to use on, you know, swapping the whole thing, swapping the derailleur, re derailleur, swapping uh, the chain, having, you know, to, d to do all of that yourself. It's, uh, yeah, oh my God, this, uh, uh, this uh, race just keeps, uh, uh, yeah. Keeps delivering. It does, <laughs> it really does. It's not play. Oh, and look, even more for the leaders in the CM.com women's race. Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill have got an issue here. Well, they're trying to bomb the, uh, oh, the wheel's off. So this is a serious issue for uh, Wakefield and Lil. Looks like they're going to put a tube in here. And that is something you do not want uh, in this race. Uh, a tube makes the the tire and the wheel super uh, prone to, you know, having uh, thorns coming in, more flat tires. So maybe they're just swap. Yeah, so actually we are live here now. Uh, and we'll see whether they'll have to, you know, go into the tech zone and swap the rear wheel. And this is just in order to make it to the tech zone so they can f get a fresh wheel that uh, doesn't have a tube, but is, is still uh, set up tubeless. So this pair have already passed through the 31 kilometer mark. Uh, and they were, at that point, they were still on their bikes with air in the tires. And they were more or less even with uh, Kim Lacourt and Viral's. In fact, a little bit ahead, 17 seconds ahead. But now they have stopped dead to attend to a flat tire. Worst case scenario, having to put a tube in. And it doesn't look as though it's work at this stage or oh, the rim. If you look down there, so the, the, the damage to the rim there. Yeah, so they, they are forced to go to a tech zone and, and get that wheel swapped as soon as possible. But oh my God, it looks massively uh, mass in really bad condition. And one of the big issues with that is that, first of all, the tire will probably not uh, be able to seal the tubeless tire will not be able to seal correctly on that rim. And uh, that's why they have indeed put a chain in. And they will need to get to that tech zone as soon as possible. It'll be a complete wheel change. The professional riders all get a set of wheels. They get allocated as a section of the tech zone where they can have a spare set of wheels. 
And the first thing they need to do is get to that tech zone and change that rear wheel. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite unbelievable how the uh, two race leaders in the respective men's and women's races have suffered major, major mechanicals. Uh, the CM.com women's leaders have uh, a bigger buffer than the, the men, but uh, every second now, every minute is leaking by and uh, the opportunity for their rivals to make time. But calm, they're not... Yeah, you don't outwardly show the panic, but yes, they'll be concerned. They're going to get the skewer in here. Yes, so actually it looks like they have now decided, okay, there's no way we can fix this wheel. We need to be put the wheel back into the frame and just ride it uh, as it is. But riding with a broken rim, a flat tire, they can do so much time. Meanwhile, up the road in the men's race, Beers and Blevins are still going strong at the moment and they are now the stage leaders and potentially, who knows, uh, how things are going to unfold here. We've seen such drama already. Uh, they are seven minutes down on the overall from a beer Lead speed company. But uh, it is high drama here on uh, Lawrenceford Estate as uh, stage number six of the Absa Cape Epic. Day seven unfolds on a stormy day for the race leaders in both the men's and women's races. We're back live uh, here at the Absa Cape Epic, and uh, this is uh, Lucas Baum, who had the uh, major mechanical issues with his derailleur, replaced the derailleur, and he's sitting on the wheel of Gayo Gega. They are giving chase again. They're chasing this pair of Matt Beers and uh, Chris Blevins, who are leading the stage now. Well, from our team on the ground, there is an estimated time loss after the uh, rear derailleur and chain replacement for Lucas Baum's bike. Estimated time losses around about 10 minutes. We'll, that's completely unconfirmed. That's purely an estimate. But uh, if you consider that they started the day with uh, a, an advantage over the 91 Songo Specialized, or apologies, the Toyota Specialized 91 team, seven minutes and eight seconds was their advantage on overall. Scott Sram, MTB Racing, Nino Shirt, and Andrew Frischnick, we haven't caught sight of them yet. They were at the start of the day, 129. They were off the back at that point, but looking to that uh, time check at the 41 kilometer mark, Scott Sram were three and a half minutes back. Well, now we're back with the, the women's, uh, and we can see Amy Wakefield, she has to ride a flat, a flat time and a broken flat tire and a broken rim. We know that uh, her and Candice are riding different equipment and different different wheels. We also know that Candice, she's kind of the stronger of the two of them. And if that rear wheel would fit into Candice's bike, for sure they would have kind of swapped uh, because we know that Amy is suffering a little bit more than Candice and in order to be the fastest it would make sense to put the so-called the worst wheel into uh, the bike of the stronger rider. So they'll have to survive until the, the next uh, tech zone in order to get a fresh wheel. So, real drama unfolding here at the uh, Absa Cape Epic on this uh, stormy day. It is still not over by a long way. The uh, overalls on both these uh, categories, and uh, it is just fascinating, uh, the uh, issues that can happen. We speak about it every day, and it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, and it's now um, dropped uh, on both the race leaders on a critical day and a critical time on 
the penultimate stage of the Absu Cape Epic, and it could well make a significant dis difference to the wearers of the leaders' jerseys come the end of today's stage here at Lonesford on this stormy day. The conditions certainly playing a role, that's for sure, the uh, muddy conditions, but a calm, composed approach from both teams is required as they try and chase back to uh, regain uh, the lead. The uh, erstwhile race leaders, Candace Lill and Amy Wakefield of e4.net Seattle Coffee Co. in the CM.com women's race. Well, they are nursing Amy Wakefield's bike to the tech zone as best they possibly can. She's got a bent rim, a flat back tire, and they're doing all they can to uh, get to the... Uh, the uh, tech zone in order to effect the repairs there. They are losing time hand over fist to Vera Lossa and uh, Kim LaCourt, who are already up the road, uh, the uh, efficient infinity insure pair. And uh, we may well see a change uh, in leadership in the women's race. And uh, I think we're already seeing a change in leadership in the men's race. We, sh we certainly are. And um, it's, it's crazy how everything just changes completely you know with a uh, within just a second it's quite fascinating and in the women's race we know that Kim Lacourt and Vera Losa they were on a hunt and they were doing the math and yeah maybe we can catch you know five six uh, minutes uh, on the next uh, on each of the following stages and we can actually you know be the overall winners of this race just right. mind-blowing they needed 13 minutes at the start of the day and look at this this is Beers and Blevins. They needed seven, just over seven minutes on the day to uh, take the overall lead, let alone the five and a half to get uh, second place. They were in third at the start of the day. And uh, Nino Schurt and Thomas Frischnecht of uh, Scott Tram MTB were second at the start of the day, 129 down. Uh, they haven't been seen for a while. They were dropped from that lead group fairly early on on this stage. We do apologize. We're not uh, the only ones uh, with uh, issues on a day like today up in the mountains. The uh, weather, the rain, the wind, there is intense wind there. We're not able to get our helicopters up uh, today, unfortunately, or our drones. So uh, we're reliant on static cameras and, of course, our Bulls Media e-bikes uh, whenever we can. But uh, we'll bring you the action, every single piece of it, as soon as we can and uh, as best we can. We just caught sight of Amy Wakefield nursing that, uh, that com completely ruined rear wheel and not able to put any air in the tire because it just simply wouldn't sit on the, uh, on the bead, wouldn't seal, and even with the tube, in, impossible to uh, inflate. And uh, Annika, you spoke about uh, the tactic that, that would make sense for this team would be for uh, Candice Lil to take that wheel. She is the stronger of the pair. She would take on that wheel so she could uh, put a little bit more power down and be able to just lose less time, you could say. And it wouldn't be the first time we've seen something like that. If uh, fans of the race who would remember, maybe who followed the race for many years, in 2008, we saw Jakob Fuglsang and Roel Paulison have exactly the same issue. They had a tire that just absolutely would not reinflate, and they had to uh, they had to ride on the rim into Bradarsdorp. They managed to save the day, and they did exactly that. They put the uh, rim, the the broken wheel, onto the stronger rider, and uh, then just measured their efforts, uh, evened out their efforts, but they managed to uh, save the day ultimately. And they were in fact also wearing the leaders' jerseys at the time. And that's uh, that's just the nature of this race. You, you can never, you never know exactly what will happen, but uh, you need to take uh, you need to take care because this this terrain is so rough, and it only takes uh, you know one bad rock in the wrong position, and uh, then your rear wheel is uh, smashed. And and yeah, this is bad news for the team. So bad news. Well, we just saw uh, the eight capital pair, Rahul Kava and Steph Kava, as well as uh, Haley Preen and Tiffany Keep, uh, Valley Electrical Titan Racing, uh, not too far behind the orange jerseys there. Uh, that's how far back they've, they've rolled. Those teams are well over an hour behind on general classification. As we back on the trails on our Bulls Media e-bikes, following um, Matt Beers, and uh, Chris Blevins capitalizing on the misfortune, and that's what happens in mountain biking. They have got to use the opportunity here to uh, try and uh, uh, eke out more and more time. They uh, won't be aware of exactly what the, uh, the issue is, um, but at some stage they will be uh, told, they will find out uh, what the gap is. But uh, Beers and Blevins, now where are they? 
McNeil. They're heading down the, into more single track uh, off the top of the mountain down towards the uh, Toyota Tough section. That's uh, coming a lot, uh, quite a bit later. But today, a shorter stage, uh, bearing in mind they've reduced the uh, stage from 78 to uh, 73 kilometers today. A couple of the climbs taken out that went right up uh, to the exposed uh, mountain peaks. And uh, it is uh, going to be a, a very, very tough day for them. Nevertheless, the uh, teams really are going to have to suffer today to uh, get to the finish. It's that's what the nature of this event is about. Right at the end of one of the hardest weeks uh, in the Absa Cape Epic. So we can see the uh, Bulls Media e-bike making its way down the uh, trails. And on uh, just ahead of them will be the Toyota Specialized uh, 91 team of Beers and Blevins. They've ridden a, a rock-solid week so far for them. Bar that one d day they had, uh, stage one, when Blevins, uh, they lost eight minutes there. Yeah, they lost eight minutes and nine seconds, and they were ruining the day that uh, that, that, that that happened to them. But uh, they know full well that anything can happen in this race. We have uh, word out on the field that uh, Lucas Baum and George Egger have lost around about ten minutes uh, repairing the or replacing that rear derailleur and replacing the chain. So still... Uh, with the, uh, the advantage they have, the seven minute and eight second advantage on overall GC is wiped out now. If you were to stop the clock now, they would have to relinquish those yellow jerseys. But the question is, who would they relinquish the yellow jerseys to? Because let's not forget that Scott Sram are still lying second overall on GC at the start of the day. And uh, with the last time check, we saw Scott Sram passing through there at three minutes and 27 back off Toyota. Specialized 91, in fact, a little bit less, and just a, around about three minutes, in fact. But they still need five minutes and 39 on the uh, the Swiss pair. So still, actually, if you were to look at it, yellow jersey would go back to Scott Sram if the race were to stop right now. Yeah, right now. But we can see uh, a trend that uh, Scott Sram is uh, fading. Uh, and if they are fading just two, three, four minutes today in comparison to uh, Toyota uh, Specialized 91 and also tomorrow, well, it's going to come down to a matter of seconds who will be the overall uh, winners uh, come, you know, when we finish tomorrow. So it is super tight and very exciting for us to follow. Well, that would be inconceivable to Nino Schert and Andre Frischen. I can imagine that you're off the back and really struggling and uh, unable to, uh, really to, to match the white hot pace at the very front. And then all of a sudden you get to the finish and you find you've lost a few minutes, maybe four or four minutes or four and a half minutes, but you still find yourself in the yellow jerseys. Yeah, Imagine that. So it's still it's so unpredictable, still all to play for. And with the drama we've seen early on in the stage, it's, uh, it I don't think we've ever seen at exactly the same time both the uh, leaders' jerseys the men's and the women's categories having uh, major mechanicals, race-changing mechanicals. And it's uh, now a true test of their uh, composure, um, their, their mechanical skills, and uh, uh, their, their mental approach to this uh, event because we haven't yet seen Lucas Baum or uh, Gao Gega in the uh, now two years that they've been here. We haven't yet seen that uh, them under this sort of pressure. They've... Uh, been attacking they've had one or two minor issues but nothing too too serious now they're going to be under pressure indeed and bear in mind that uh, both uh, Chris Blevins and Matt uh, Beers and also the Scott Stram team they would have visually like seen what happened to speed yes. company racing so they would know the scenario that we are kind of uh, uh, p uh, painting for you here they would know but they wouldn't know how just how bad the issue actually would be and how long how much time speed company would lose but they are all you can rest assured they're all just time trialing it right now they're going as fast as possible because both these teams here they know they can you know go into yellow well, it's exploded today on this stormy day in uh, the Helderberg Basin. The Absa Cape Epic living up to its reputation. The race that measures all and uh, the untamed uh, terrain has claimed victims today. No question about that. It's how they recover. How do they uh, restore uh, body, mind and bike to uh, a condition where they can get back into the race at the, sh at the uh, position they were in at the uh, start of the day. 
Well, it is uh, high drama. Beers hanging on to Blevins, who's clearly uh, on, a, on, a, on a good day, it seems. He's been on the front virtually all day of this pair, and he's uh, setting a cracking pace for this, this combination of Beers and Blevins. But this team also have to be careful because we know that in these conditions uh, the riders will lower the tire pressure just a little bit in order to get some more traction on these very muddy and slippery trails and i think that is why we saw the issue with amy wakefield and her her rear wheel simply because a little bit lower uh, tire pressure uh, makes it more fragile and more susceptible to you know when you hit a rock to have a in this case, actually even uh, a broken rim. Mm. Not only a broken or a flat tire, but a broken rim. Well, the conditions here at the finish have uh, t t deteriorated a little bit. The rain is falling here. It wasn't a little bit earlier, but it was up in the mountain. So it uh, just adds to uh, the drama. The uh, the rock that uh, yeah, Amy Wakefield hit a rock in a ditch. And uh, away go so the slightly, slightly lower um, pressure um, can contribute to the to this uh, mechanical? I would assume that's uh, the case in this, this situation. And as a rider, you really, you kind of uh, estimate, okay, what are Risk the... Risk and reward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yes, I get a little bit more grip by lowering my tire pressure, but I also have to ride a little bit more carefully because I can't hit the rocks at the same speed as I did yesterday because, uh, yeah, the tire pressure is lower, so... Th you know, it's easier to get a flat tire or a broken rim. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, really bad luck to, to have it today. So, bad luck it is indeed. And uh, this is the team that are capitalizing on that misfortune of uh, Beer, uh, Liet, Fact, uh, Liet uh, Speed Company Racing, Beers and uh, Blevins of uh, Toyota Specialized 91. Uh, surging ahead, and oblivious to the time lost uh, by the yellow jerseys, but uh, they're certainly not oblivious to what their task is today, and that is just to keep going as hard as possible, mindful of the, s the issues that have plagued the, the others, and that they know there's only too well. The mechanicals uh, can plague them uh, just as quickly. Uh, true drama-filled day. Yeah, at the Cape Epic. And this is the f sharp end of the race. Imagine what might be happening further back with the amateurs, with the uh, other category leaders. Um, it's a minefield here for the riders today at the uh, Cape Epic. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we are having difficulty with our coverage. The weather is not uh, conducive to uh, clean pictures, unfortunately, uh, consistently. But we do uh, keep you entertained, and we'll try and do so right now. With the hyenas, well, the hyenas are the uh, two riders who sit right at the very back of the field, and they uh, sweep the field. And uh, they're not to interfere with the riders in terms of uh, helping them get to the finish, but they ensure that uh, the riders do get to the finish uh, and make sure that uh, they uh, get to the finish safely, the slowest riders in the field. Let's catch up with uh, Richard and Matt. I'm trying to stay away from the hyenas. <laughs> They're very nice, but I also know what they mean. <laughs> been an epic hyena for six years now. We are the eyes and ears of the race organization riding right behind the last riders. And the front of the race is a race to win it and the back of the race is a race to survive. You see the best of the human spirit come out. You know, the guys are, are fighting every day for cutoff. I was there in the beginning with, with Kevin when this whole thing, whole crazy race started. And um, it's so awesome to see it having grown into such an amazing event. A couple of years ago, Rich saw me at a coffee shop and he said, Matt, why don't we ever see you at the race? And I said, well, no one invites me. So he said, well, hey, why don't you come do the hyena? He gave me two months to train last year, which was a bit of a struggle. This year, I've been doing a bit more homework. And um, it's been great to be back here again, um, at the back of the field, um, experiencing the race with Rich. We have a lot of fun at the back, um, making up stories about nutrition and solve all the world's problems. And um, yeah, it's really cool to just ride these awesome trails together with a buddy and um, just have fun.
So the uh, hyenas, no rider wants to see the hyenas. Uh, it, it is a, uh, a tough, long day at the best of times. But when the hyenas are snapping at your heels and your wheels, uh, you know you're going to have perhaps the longest day of all. And there have been uh, lots of wonderful stories of perseverance and determination and courage and uh, plenty of tears as well from riders and teams who haven't made it uh, to the finish line uh, within the... the uh, uh, time allotted for their batch, so uh, they've had to be uh, their numbers cut off. They do get the opportunity to ride the next day with a blue number, and uh, if they finish outside uh, that time again for another day, they get withdrawn completely from the race. So they do uh, get the opportunity to ride with a blue number, but they don't get an official finish in the Amsa Cape that week. Try and uh, get uh, as many riders as possible to the grand finale in Val de Vie. Getting to the grand finale in one piece is, uh, as, as a team is an enormously uh, prestigious thing for every single rider here. It truly is. It's a unique experience and a very unique race. Um, you hear the stories beforehand, you see the pictures, the videos, but you don't really know what it is until you go and experience it uh, yourself. And it's, uh, it's, it's very unique. And riders spending eight, seven, eight, nine hours a day, every day out there, uh, trying to uh, complete each stage and uh, just getting in 10, 12 minutes before the cu the, their particular uh, cut off time. And uh, it uh, does add the stress and strain. They get in when it's starting to get dark on the big marathon days and have to uh, do all the post ride admin. Um, they don't have teams, they don't have uh, support like a lot of the uh, the professional teams. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what it's about. That's the heart and soul of this race. Yeah, it truly is. And as a pro rider, it, as I've been here, I've been here five times, and, you know, you don't really see all the struggle that is going on, you know, further down in the field. And now that I have a slightly different or a very different role, you know, I get to, to see all of that and experience all of that, and you can just... You know, at dinner in the night, you hear all the stories that are told, and it's uh, it's, it's quite amazing, and uh, it just uh, gives you an idea of the the impact of this race for, you know, so many people's uh, lives. Yeah, if you you uh, you will join us tomorrow at the Val de Vie for the grand finale, you'll see what it means to uh, receive a medal, what what that means to these uh, riders, the emotion that. Uh, is uh, clearly evident on all those riders as they cross the finish line and their friends and family who've been through the journey with them in pre pre preparing for it and uh, supporting them uh, from a distance or firsthand. So it is something special. Wind, rain, and uh, not particularly cold, but conditions really are brutally hard today at the uh, Absa Cape Epic uh, on stage number six, uh, day seven of the eight tomorrow's grand finale day as they head from Lawrenceford to Val de Vie to complete the journey that is the Absa Cape Epic. Epic, and we have had massive drama in the uh, men's and women's uh, UCI races today. On the route at the moment, this is the uh, race leading team of Christopher Blevins on the front and uh, South Africa's marathon champion Matt Beers at the back here. And they racing for Toyota Specialized 91. Started the day in uh, third place, seven minutes behind the overall leaders of Bear uh, Liet Speed Company, and uh, that team of Gail Geiger and uh, Lucas Baum have encountered massive problems with the derailleur mechanical failure and they've had to uh, have uh, changed that uh, derailleur they had to ride back to the tech zone and get it uh, repaired or repair it themselves and replace it in fact and they are losing time well they lost time there you can bet now the way those two uh, young men ride they will be powering as much as they possibly can to uh, get to the uh, close that gap of course uh, scott sram mtb are in the middle of all that as well they uh, were nino shirt and andre fishnet one minute and 29 seconds back at the start of the day the drama is unfolding here on a stormy day at Lawrenceford. Our roving reporter, Jazz Kushi, is down at the uh, finish line. Jazz, uh, it's pretty messy out there today. Yeah, it's wild down here. We huddled up, hiding away from this rain, got our Chivita jackets on to try and stay dry. Uh, it's, there's absolutely nothing held bright about the Helderberg down here. It's carnage as on, out on route, and it's going to be interesting to see when the guys come in later on today. There's going to be a lot of mud, a lot of pain. Look forward to seeing what happens with uh, in the lead. There's obviously a lot happening out on route, uh, and our vehicles and, and um, 
motorbikes are struggling to get to the riders and uh, keep up, like see what's happening out there. But yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what's happening up here. Um, back to you guys. Thanks so much, uh, Jazz. Just uh, giving us a, an idea of what it's like uh, at the finish line. Now they're running, uh, uh, they're riding uh, at a the breakneck speed alongside uh, the irrigation canals that uh, are around this uh, valley in various uh, strategic places to channel water down to the orchards and vineyards of Lawrenceford. Beers and Blevins making every pedal stroke count today because this is an opportunity for the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team to uh, uh, redeem themselves after that tough week, the uh, tough start of the week they had. They can come back here. Yeah, they come back very strong here now, and um, you can be sure that they will try to, you know, do the math in their heads. They saw Speed Company having a, a massive uh, uh, issue. They don't know exactly how much, t uh, how long, how far they are back, but they know that uh, this means that they can, you know, start to look back on it or try to to actually go into the yellow jerseys. They know that Scott Sram. It's also on the GC ahead of them, but I also know that they every single day they are fading more and more, it seems like. So right now they'll try to keep cool, composed and, you know, just ride as uh, as uh, fast as uh, and safely as possible. But uh, you can be sure, you know, somewhere in the back of their minds, they are trying to do the math. In the graveyard section now as they're riding down the Toyota Tough section. And, uh, yeah, they, they will be... <laughs> you know, not to get too carried away here. Yeah, that's the key. Just uh, ride within the, the limitations that the, the route, the conditions, and your body allows. A little uh, jump there from uh, Beers. He's a man who loves that. He started off out his sporting career as uh, a motocross rider. And uh, he's now made his way uh, into mountain biking after an injury while he was racing in the United States. Uh, put him off the motorbike for a while. They put him into... Uh, medical rehab, they put him on a bike and uh, they realized that he has some very special properties when it comes to uh, the power he can put out on a mountain bike. And for the last, what, 10 years or so, we've seen exactly that. He is, of course, an Absa Cape Epic winner from uh, 2021 with Jordan Saru. So he knows what it's about. Lachlan Morton and Keegan Svensson going through there and having uh, a good second half of the week. Like so many other teams, we've seen uh, this uh, race sort of uh, topsy-turvy, uh, almost seesaw. Uh, the uh, race after the first three days and then the uh, time trial was almost a pivotal uh, day for a lot of the teams. Some went backwards and others have come forward. Now, this is a team on the charge now. Eger and Baum. Eger on the front there, Baum chasing. His was the uh, mechanical issue, his uh, derailleur uh, that uh, got uh, ruined by a piece of wire, it appears, and they had to replace it. This is uh, Beers alongside that uh, Slurt, as we call them in uh, South Africa, irrigation canal. Well, alongside that irrigation canal, Beers and Blevins are charging ahead. And uh, like you said, Gerald, um, uh, Sergeant um, Canadel Vas Arabe, they are lying in second spot overall at the 54 kilometer mark at the time check. And Scott Sram, MTB Racing, at 2 minutes and 40 seconds behind Toyota Specialized 91. So if you consider that they started the day 5 minutes 39 ahead of Toyota Specialized 91, we could see Scott Sram inheriting, re-inheriting that yellow jersey. Of course, we uh, have heard out in the field, we've got reports of the uh, Orbia Leard Speed Company racing team having lost 10 minutes, which puts them out of the yellow jersey virtually at the moment if we were to stop the race currently. We're still waiting for that time check and over 5 minutes have elapsed since passing since the first team, Toyota Specialized 91, passed through that time check, the 54 kilometer mark. And um, we've just seen uh, Mbuko type dev going through there six minutes back. So the time is ticking and uh, all eyes on that time check to see when Orbia Liet come through there. It's going to be fascinating. I mean, they, we, we, we've talked consistently over two years of this event about their attacking instinct and their positive approach and uh, how uh, bold and always brazen they have been in the way they've thrown down the gauntlet to all other challenges and said, come and hunt us down if you want to ride uh, with us. Now they are the hunters. And how that mindset might probably not change a great deal. They just keep going as hard as they can. But a mechanical issue like that, that's the first big mechanical they've had that sort of sits in your mind and says, we don't want that, uh, you know, th that's what can happen when you go a little bit hard. 
And this is Calderon uh, and Steenberg, the Cannondale Bass team, third at the time check at the 41 kilometer mark. We've seen efficient infinity. Insure Lacourt and Laws are going through here just after two and a half hours of racing. And uh, Gomez Villafana lying in second, three minutes back. Cannondale Bass Arabe, four minutes 40 back. Valley Electrical, 11 minutes and 14 seconds. Short followed uh, just after that by eight capital, the Slovakians. 11.46, still no sign of the orange jersey wearers. What disaster for them. Yeah, really just a shame. I mean, imagine the amount of things they had to overcome this week. It's, uh, I mean, at some point it was like, okay, can we even race? Uh, so it's, uh, it's yeah. been, <laughs> yeah, the fact it's that been they quite some week. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, at, at some point on that first day, there was somewhere in both Candace Hill and, and Amy Wakefield, perhaps not even Amy. I mean, she, she seems to have had that, uh, we were going to carry on, but Candace, I think it immediately she saw the injury on uh, Amy was like, we've actually had to call the medic and we're out of here. But that was a very brief moment. And then uh, they taped it up with duct tape, the the. Uh, pierced a bicep on Amy Wakefield and they've carried on building a lead that solid first uh, few days they won that stage and that uh, served them as a great insurance um, and they'll look back who knows what will happen over the next uh, day and a half but they'll look back and think well thank heavens we had that insurance because uh, at the moment 11 minutes down in fifth place eight capital and still no sign of uh, Wakefield and uh, her partner uh, Candace Lill and remember, the gap was 13 minutes. So uh, that's uh, a look at the split at 54 kilometers in the men's uh, race. Toyota Specialized 91, 257 on Scott Sram. And a 511 to Beaumartin and Munoz of Canada Bas Arabe. Both uh, their teams having a great day today. And Obielet Speed Company, 1123 down the yellow jerseys. Well, there are charges on for that pair will be you can bet the way they ride they will be eating into that as best they possibly can but they've got to make their way through riders as well the teams yeah and also have to to battle uh, you know all these con these conditions and uh, the question is can they you know keep cool composed and and turn you know all the disappointment into you know something positive and and finding the rhythm and getting back into that mode where we know that they're absolutely unbeatable and uh, yeah it's a uh, you know it's a weird day for them you know the first day today that they actually get to wear the yellow jerseys on a stage in the race and we just saw how happy they i mean it was truly something very special for this team and now at the same time having one of the worst days on the bike in the the their history with this uh, race yeah it's uh, it m i can't really imagine what goes uh, through their minds right now there's uh, how to look at the race would to stop right now and uh, the, the camera setting up at the finish gives you an idea that we're not far away from the uh, the leaders getting into the finish scott stram would uh, retake the yellow jerseys by two minutes and 42 from toyota specialized 91 or barely at speed company at 657 uh, the rest are the rest at this stage. Uh, they're all making uh, good headway. Canada, Vass, Arabe are on their way up, but uh, certainly not going to make any impact on the uh, top three. It's all about, uh, for the overall, those top three teams. And this is a virtual GC. I mean, we this, this tells us a lot, and what it tells us the most is we have absolutely no idea who will be the overall race winners come tomorrow because we see this trend that Scott Schramm is fading by mm. two, three minutes per day to uh, Toyota Specialized 91. And if that's the case, we they have like two minutes uh, 42. Uh, oof, it's going to be ever so tight tomorrow. And if you were to draw that graph, it would be, theoretically, we would be almost on even time between exactly. Toyota Specialized 91 and Scott Schramm's Andre Frischnick and Nina Schurter. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, th and that's the grand finale. We would go into the grand finale tomorrow, uh, virtually on a, a level playing field. Um, so it's just uh, it's so beautifully set up. You don't want to leave this drama here at Lawrenceford or tomorrow on our grand finale day because so much can happen. The weather, we don't quite know what it will be like tomorrow as they make their way from Lawrenceford to uh, Val de Vie in Pal. But uh, this is certainly a day that is played uh, havoc with general classification but has brought us such drama and excitement and uh, set up the race 
this 19th edition of the Absa Cape Epic, like never before, I think, uh, going into the final day. Three teams very much in the mix for the overall here at the Absa Cape Epic. Fantastic stuff. Piers and Blevins uh, making uh, headway at uh, the front of the race at the moment. Again, they will be oblivious to the drama, uh, the extent of the drama, and how deep it is for uh, Eger and Baum, and uh, even for uh, Nino Schurter and Thomas uh, and Andre Frischneck. Uh, you'll, you'll bet that Frischneck and uh, Schurter will be uh, motivated now. They have a chance. They uh, perhaps would have earlier today on this stage with Frischneck suffering and thought, well, that's, uh, that's it. We, we, we're going to be in trouble here if everything uh, uh, falls away. It has been, but now uh, the doors open again for them. And uh, there's nothing like that to motivate uh, riders. And uh, Nino Schurter chasing a third title and Andre Frischneck a first. It would be a remarkable comeback. And we often talk about, you know, how this week is a bit of a, an emotional roller coaster for the riders. But imagine being Scott Schramm, you know, just every day well we cannot ignore it. it there must be some sort of frustration going on you know in their minds because you know they came here they went out strong they were in the yellow jerseys they lost the jerseys they saw that they saw themselves you know like fading a little bit you know day by day and uh, well you know just within one second it's it's all upside down and they can actually you know they know okay actually we we could be back in the in yellow Vera Lossa and uh, Kim LeCourt are the leaders in the women's race at the moment. And uh, virtually, they are the race leaders in the CM.com because the time check has just come up at the 41 kilometer mark that puts Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill, I think it's difficult to say, 20 minutes down on the lead on the stage. Wakefield and Lill indeed have lost 20 minutes and 20 seconds to the pairing of Kim LeCourt on the day. They had a buffer before the start of the day uh, on overall general classification of 13 minutes and 53 seconds. So six minutes or so, six and a half minutes uh, now back off the pace of, uh, in on virtual general classification, it's the pace of efficient infinity insure. It looks like eFortnet have resolved those, uh, the tire issue or the wheel issue, the entire wheel broke. You can see from the crooked rim that, uh, that there was major damage to the bike of Amy Wakefield got uh, a new wheel in that uh, in that bike so they can fight on and try to eat back into that deficit. Meanwhile, Le uh, the uh, lacorte Lossa combination has been so good uh, this week. They've had three stage wins and at the moment they're looking at a fourth and uh, there's a major carrot at uh, the end of the stage if they are to maintain uh, this situation. It is drama plenty here on stage six of the Absa Cape Epic. This is the leader, leading team on the stage at the moment. Efficient Infinity Insure. And uh, as it stands now, they are leading the stage. And with e4.net Seattle Coffee Co. having just gone through the time split at 41 kilometers, some 20 minutes adrift of this team after their major mechanicals with a, a dented uh, rear wheel on Amy Wakefield's bike. It has Vera Loss and Kim LeCourt in those red jerseys as the virtual leaders of the race right now as it stands with uh, still some 20-odd, uh, 28 k's or so to go. So there's still plenty that can happen. But uh, the drama is happening on both the CM.com women's race and the uh, elite men's race, which is where we are now with Matt Beers and Chris Blevins. Uh, briefly, we were with them. They are leading the stage at the moment. And uh, the uh, issues that have uh, plagued the uh, r yellow jerseys, Gail Geger and uh, Lucas Baum, have put them out of the yellow jerseys. And it won't be, it if the race were to stop now, it wouldn't be uh, Beers and uh, Blevins in yellow. It would be going back to Nino Schurt and Andrew Frischneck. So, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, every every minute we look back at the live pictures and we get reports from the route, something is changing. There's uh, Kim LeCourt and Vera Lossa working as hard as ever. And 
You know, when the incident happened with Amy's wheel, this team was uh, already up ahead. And of course, you know, the question is, would they know about uh, the issue of Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill? And if they know about it, how will they handle it? Because if they know about it, they probably also know that is a pretty serious issue that they're having. So they, you know, somewhere in the back of their minds will also start, you know, to do the math and we, they have to, I think they have to catch up seven, how was it, 13, 13 minutes? 13 minutes, yep. Um, on Candice Lil and Amy Wakefield. And if they know, okay, they're having a serious issue, you know, they'll probably be aware that they are actually the overall GC leaders at, at, at uh, this very moment. And of course, how will, that play into their minds, you know? How, how, I mean, there's only one person in this room who can tell us <laughs> how, that wor how, how that might work. Mm. Five-time winner. Um, you've had issues uh, where, where you've been behind. I know that one day you had to make up at an hour. Uh, what goes on in that mind? What, how do you two, uh, the, the two teammates, uh, talk it through? How do, you, how do you manage that situation? Oh, it really all depends on the exact uh, situations. Uh, as I recall, whenever we had some big issues, you know, we had, um, I remember one race, we had also a, a horrible day with just endless amount of, of punctures that set us quite uh, far back. In another edition of the race, we actually got a time penalty because, well, that was all my fault. I was going <laughs> a little bit too hot into the final 5-10 k's of the the route and uh, I, I ended up accidentally taking a wrong turn. I didn't realize until we crossed the finish line that gave us an hour penalty. And But all of these issues actually happened quite early in the race, yes. quite early in the week. And then you, you feel a little bit more like, okay, it's still possible for us to, to catch up. But now we only have the rest of today's stage and tomorrow and then, you know, it's over. Yep, it's happening at a critical phase uh, in the race towards the back end, the last uh, day and a half of uh, racing at this year's uh, Absa Cape Epic. So let's uh, have a look, a uh, little recap on what has happened here. Well, there was Gail Gager missing his uh, pedal in the uh, start line and drifting straight back um, very early on in the yellow jerseys. Perhaps important for things to come. Nino Schurter made it hard up the very first climbs. The plan was for Nino Schurter and perhaps the, well, certainly the, uh, the uh, Toyota 91 Specialized team to go hard with them and try and attack the yellow jerseys at every opportunity to put them under a bit of pressure. And uh, it, uh, well, didn't uh, transpire just like that. Uh, there was uh, Scott Schramm as well as uh, Toyota Specialized 91 all in this group uh, with the yellow jerseys. And giving chase, well, a good day for the uh, Bulls Mavericks team here. Canyon Northwave were in the mix here as well as they were giving chase. But uh, on that early climb, it was Henry Frischnick who started losing contact. And Nino Schurt had to slide back and help his young uh, Swiss uh, teammate to, to nurse him uh, along a little bit. Because it's all week. It's been Frischnick who has been slightly uh, the weaker of the two riders as one did perhaps expect riding with the greatest of all time which allowed the yellow jerseys and uh, the Toyota Specialized 91 team to go ahead and forge a bit of a lead. Chris Blevins was looking in ominously good form. Uh, Matt Beers not quite as uh, able to match Blevins' pace up the climbs. Well it was just a good collaboration between these two teams and they knew that they at this point in the race they knew they were getting just gaining some time on the Scott Ram team. It was a uh, a, a good collaboration between the Germans and the American South African pairing. And, uh, little did they know what was to come. Was still a lot, uh, still a lot was about to happen in the race, and uh, with the not quite as big a gap um, as the uh, as in the women's category, but still the dominance of the Germans at this point in the race was pretty clear. Yes, they started the day with a one minute and 29 second lead uh, over the Scott Schramm MTB pair and then a seven minute and eight second lead over the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 pair. Willie Pirelli, Wout Alleman and Fabian Rabensteiner were uh, going hard. So were Cannondale Vass in the mix. The Bulls were going well. Canyon Northwave. Uh, these were teams that are finding their legs late in the day and are really going 
uh, hard. Marco Hubert and Peter de Toy of Imbuco uh, Type Dev uh, going well. Beautiful flowing single tracks is all looking good at this stage until this moment. It all fell apart. The derailleur on Lucas Baum's uh, bike was uh, compromised by what appears to be a piece of wire somewhere on the trail. And uh, they had to then turn around and go back to the uh, tech zone to try and effect the repairs so bad it was uh, that they had to just took the chain off completely Lucas Baum's uh, bike here and uh, it was a uh, Gago who basically pushed him back to the tech zone to effect the repairs you know this is this is as serious as it gets for the yellow jersey towards the end of the race and this is when that relationship and the composure for each rider gets tested mm, yeah yeah you can never prepare for these situations i mean beforehand the teams and the riders would would go through different uh, mechanical scenarios and practice it but in you know in clean nice controlled circumstances and here you know it's muddy it's messy you're tired uh, yeah, it's, it's, you can't really prepare for it, so it's all about trying to keep as cool as you can. Spare derailleur in their uh, tech box at the tech zone. Into Baum's uh, bike and off they went. We guesstimate around 10, 11 minutes that they lost. This pair were up front and capitalizing. They weren't uh, perhaps at that stage aware of exactly how bad the issue was for Egger and Baum, but Blevins and Beers had won uh, three stages already so far they've uh, just going as hard as they possibly can to capitalize on any opportunities uh, today and uh, the opportunity has been presented to them cm.com uh, women's race headed off with uh, the red jerseys uh, on uh, the they're not actually the apps african leaders they are uh, Vera Lossa and Kim Lacourt, but they are the form team at the moment coming to the second half of the race. And momentum certainly in their favour with yesterday's a great performance. And Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill pairing, the all South African pairing. Uh, still, th you could arguably say, well, one, one could say that they were in defence of that, uh, that lead going into today's stage. 13.55 is the advantage that they had over Lawza and uh, Kim Lacourt. Uh, still, uh, we had no idea what would what was still to come today. No, and we we did do a little bit of a calculation. So if they were able to put in five or six, five, six, seven uh, minutes on the Amy um, and Candice uh, today and tomorrow, you know, it's not impossible to see them t in in orange, you know, at the end of uh, this week. But it would take for some aggressive riding and some early attacks. And uh, but it's definitely not impossible at all. And that was uh, as they were going down the first of the single tracks here. It was Lawson and Lacourt and then Wakefield and Lil and Kenneth. And then uh, this is the struggling pair of Sofia gomez Viafan and Katharina Nash uh, losing time all the while. And at this point, it was still all together and uh, all with their overall campaign of uh, Lil and Wakefield was still very much on track. It's all... Uh, all uh, you basically felt was that uh, Wakefield had to stay on the back wheel of uh, uh, Vera Lossa, Kim Lacourt, and they would be uh, secure going into the grand finale. But the Absa Cape Epic is about so much more than just staying on the wheel and riding your bike because uh, they started to lose a bit of uh, time here on Losa and Lacourt on these steep climbs. And then this drama started unfolding. Initially a puncture, uh, they tried to repair. But uh, it got worse and worse. Tried to insert a tube, and uh, that wasn't going to work because they, uh, the rim on uh, Amy Wakefield's uh, rear wheel had been uh, compromised and damaged, and uh, that was a uh, little terminal for the uh, for the wheel. And uh, well, they then had to make their way to the tech zone. They had a very tough decision to make at this point, and they did try a tube, but uh, just due to the nature of the damage of the rim, that was completely impossible to get it to seal on the on the rim the tire bead needs to sit perfectly and uh, that was not to be in retrospect perhaps they uh, spent um, rather a lot of time trying to uh, make it make it seat but uh, in the end they had to start they had to continue with the wheel completely flat mm, and remember nowadays riders uh, most of the the, the pro riders uh, they actually ride carbon rims and i think you know having a splintered carbon rim makes it uh, well 
very, very dangerous to, to insert a tube because, you know, those splinters can get into to the tube. So definitely this is like the worst uh, scenario that could uh, possibly happen out there for the team. So what happened was they rode to the uh, tech zone on that uh, damaged uh, rear rim very slowly indeed. Not much more they could do. And uh, as a result, when last we uh, checked, the uh, going through 41 kilometers, they'd lost 20 minutes. And with it, their overall uh, lead to uh, the uh, pair of Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa. And the uh, damage had happened at around about the 37 kilometer mark. And they still had 4Ks to ride to get to that um, that tech zone. Four kilometers may not seem like a long way, but uh, on a completely flat w flat wheel, it, uh, it just goes to show how much time you can lose. The theme uh, yesterday and today has been about looking after your equipment and, uh, and, uh, and trying to uh, ride uh, with that in mind. It's difficult because uh, if things are, you know, if she hit a rock, it was in a, in a, um, in a, in a ditch and uh, well, uh, Lucas Baum picked up some wire that was on, on, on the route and you can't see everything uh, all the time. And uh, if uh, it's the worst case scenario as we've seen today, then you lose uh, copious amounts of time. And uh, we are at this stage seeing a change in both the men's and uh, women's race uh, overall leads as we sit here at the finish at Lawrenceford. Uh, apologies for the uh, lack of coverage up in the mountain, but I think you'll uh, understand if you can, uh, if you know this part of the world, if you're looking uh, up this finish route as we are now, then you would normally see the Hildeberg mountain range in the distance there, but of course thick cloud has uh, coated the mountains and of course rain and intense wind up there as well, preventing us from getting our helicopters up in the air and uh, obviously compromising the signal from our media e-bikes and other cameras out there at uh, certain moments. There's the uh, split time at 64 kilometers. Toyota Specialized 91, 3.34 ahead of Nino Schert and Andre Fischnecht. Well, that's less than 10 kilometers to go, the split times between Toyota Specialized 91 and Scott SRAM. And uh, they started the day five minutes and 39 seconds behind Toyota Specialized 91. So they've still got a bit of a buffer, not a lot. Uh, they've got two minutes to play with. And uh, if they can hold that gap to within two minutes, they will inherit or re-inherit that leader's jerseys. Almost inconceivable at the start of today. Quite remarkable uh, drama that uh, that has befallen the two race leaders and has uh, created a scenario here that uh, for you out there watching and for us uh, on the sidelines is just uh, magical because it's going to create such drama tomorrow and, and uh, for the rest of uh, today. It's absolutely unbelievable, and uh, for the riders, it must be. I wouldn't. Yeah, it would be. It, it's quite uh, stressful uh, because you know they are going to to battle for the overall GC win tomorrow, and we often see a scenario where you know when we go into the final stage on the on Sundays in this race, you know the GC. I would. It's more or less settled. settled yeah. It would take for something quite extraordinary you know for the leading team to loot, lose the jerseys and normally you we would see them have a little bit of a buffer which would allow for them to you know just take it a little bit more conservatively but tomorrow number one and two on the, the GC the Toyota Specialized 91 and uh, Scott Schramm they have to race you know as hard as they can uh, because yeah they are racing for the yellow jerseys tomorrow. And in, in fact, the grand finale is a prestigious stage to win. And uh, many of the teams who uh, have had particularly bad days, they save themselves for that, uh, that last day, knowing how prestigious it is. So teams who aren't necessarily uh, battling for the overall will take a chance, will make it a, an early escape or a late, a last minute escape to try to win uh, the grand finale, the prestigious stage. We've seen the likes of Van Hoetz and, uh, and Hamida and the Flukigers who have done one of those uh, daring attacks near the end. And uh, with all to play for in the overall general classification, that's unlikely to happen. We could very easily see a general classification winner winning the final stage.
like we did last year. Yeah, last year, the gap from uh, the leaders at this, uh, going into the final day, Canyon Northwave, Seerwalt and Stosek was 2.45. They had over Speed Company Racing's Eger and Baum. And we know uh, now the drama and uh, the, the incredible ride by Eger and Baum and the, the uh, health issues uh, suffered by Canyon Northwave uh, sort of that Eger and Baum would uh, storm to victory and uh, take the, the win on the final day. So that was the drama that unfolded last year and looks like we're heading for the same this year, except maybe with three teams in the mix. So fantastic stuff. Now, uh, unfortunately, no live pictures out on the route uh, just at the moment. As soon as we get them, we'll bring them to you. But let's go down to the finish line. And I think Jazz has got a special guest with him. Arian Luti, Pump for Peace Racing Team, team manager. How difficult is it for a team manager to sort of manage your team's stops and nutrition on a day like this? Well, it's, uh, how should I say, we only had one feed zone today. Uh, there's not much we can do. It's basically all up to them. Uh, they really have to tough it out there. The only thing we can say, look, we can hand you, we could hand a jacket today. The uh, commissaires allowed it, but they didn't take it. So we just hold our fingers crossed and hope for the best. And this kind of wild weather, do you miss the racing at all? Would you want to be on the other side on the bike? I'm pretty tired, so my body would definitely not be up for that challenge. But I'm just still like, it's so exciting just to be a little bit of a part of it. And I love watching the racing. The drama is massive today. It's uh, the leaders' jerseys all had problems today and it's quite heartbreaking. I really feel for them. And obviously I really feel for all the riders uh, being out in these elements and battling with them. Especially the back markers. I mean, we're getting wet now. They're going to be in the rain all day long. Yeah, I think the rain is just getting stronger, actually. So it's really, really tough on, on tired bodies, on tired minds. You know, you think like two days is going to be quickly over. But when the weather goes against you like this, you know, everything is slower, harder. The equipment doesn't want to go smooth anymore. It's really, really tough. Well, let's go and get out of the rain. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Ariane Luti. Uh uh, talking uh, to Jazz because you're down at the uh, finish there. Rain it is. And um, Ariane now uh, running the uh, Pump for Peace team, which uh, they have a team uh, racing here, Tumela Marke and Unat Ngumalo, and they're going very nicely indeed. But uh, nice to see Ariane. She uh, is not racing any longer for health issues. She's not uh, uh, in, in peak health and peak conditions, she said, but uh, lovely to have her still involved and, and giving back to the to the sport uh, from that perspective. Yeah, I mean, she's been around this race for the better, I don't know, 10, 12 years. You know, it's a big part of, uh, of her life. So, of course, she is uh, happy to be here. Um, it takes a little bit of a, a time, you know, to, to adjust to a new role, but it seems like she's uh, she's actually thriving. So that's uh, it's good to see. Lovely. So uh, the drama is just right here at Lawrenceford because uh, Beers and Blevins, the stage leaders, are heading towards the finish and uh, they are uh, leading quite, uh, quite comfortably at this stage because Canadel Vass Arabe, uh, when last we checked, were three minutes down in second place. What a day they're having. Scott Sram... Uh, uh, MTB are 317 down and uh, key to this are Bayer Liet Speed Company 10 minutes and 18 seconds down in ninth place at the moment. Well, the Canada del Vas Arabe would have s team would have seen the women's uh, can the women's category their teammates and uh, Calderon and Steinberg uh, having getting a podium spot and wanting to match that not to be outdone the uh, men's category Bo Martin and uh, Munoz Moreno very comfortable in that third spot overall. They will have to hold off the marauding Scott Sram MTB Racing, who are racing not just for the stage podium, but also for the overall. Bulls Mavericks also in that group with uh, Scott Sram, as well as Canyon Northways, Vakoch and Stutzman. But uh, Orbi Elliott Speed Company, just uh, just having a quick look at how they've coped um, over after their uh, major mechanical. They lost uh, half their drivetrain, in fact, and had to replace it. And looking at the dis the time checks between the time checks, 54 kilometer and 64 kilometer, 10 kilometers, the Orbia Lead Speed Company are riding 31 seconds faster than Toyota Specialized 91, and over a minute faster than the uh, chasing, the chasing, um, the chasing the trio, you could say. And uh, Orbia Lead Speed Company are highly motivated. They're very strong today. Still, their firepower is no questioning it. 
and they are trying to claw back as much time as possible. They are going full gas, 31 seconds faster than uh, the leading team on the stage, Toyota Specialized 91. So just under six minutes uh, between the top three on that virtual leaderboard. That is obviously before they've uh, finished the stage. And, uh, well, it does as they set up the final day. And the final day, uh, in contrast to previous years at the Absa Cape Epic, is a significant challenge. And, uh, well, we didn't think there'd be enough time today for these teams to ride, uh, ride uh, time into each other. But uh, here it's happened in the most dramatic of, of ways. So, yeah, tomorrow, wide open uh, going into the final day. We still not finished uh, this stage, of course. Here's Beers and uh, Blevins, uh, Blevins. And if you're wondering how it can happen that uh, you can suffer a mechanical like that just look at this terrain they're riding through here it's been windy windy and rain and so on so all manner of uh, debris can blow onto the, the onto the route or just be there and uh, you get slightly wrong or you're a bit unlucky a, st a stick flicks up uh, from the, the wheel and hits your derailleur gets stuck in your your derailleur or your spokes and uh, that's it you are uh, trail side trying to affect the repairs so that's what can happen and you slide off and uh, suddenly you're hitting a, a log that's uh, been lying off the trail, seemingly out of uh, reach, and uh, your race is uh, is compromised. So that's what can happen. And just can, can just happen at any moment and to any of the riders at any time. And just remember, by the end of the week, these riders would have spent somewhere around maybe 25 uh, or 30 hours on the bike. So you know where to be on the bike and where issues can occur if you just because will have it's uh this pep levens he's got a very early Well, powering towards the finish, Toyota Specialized 91's Matt Beers and uh, Chris Blevins on a bit of a drag. Not wasting any energy. Uh, in, they won't perhaps get that. So this 
is uh, the closing uh, moments uh, of stage Lawrenceford Farm uh, as unexpected way in some respects but it will also uh, every ride and every team it is expected at some stage expected mechanical some issues stage, yeah. and uh, sometimes it doesn't happen to you and you can be the beneficiary of it and this pair certainly are today here's in Blevins heading towards the finish of a stage six here at Lawrenceford Farm and uh, with this comes the opportunity to launch an assault on the yellow jersey on the final day because come the end of today there's every likelihood that the top three teams could be separated by as little as five or six minutes and going to the final stage will be thrilling equally so in the women's category because we're with our stage leaders there in the red jerseys kim lacourt and uh, she's the rider at the back here and vera laws as they head into the rocky trail the descent here thrilling stuff it is but uh, look at the conditions they're having to deal with today absolutely treacherous the rain has continued to pour almost uh, incessantly up at the top of the mountain it has been intermittent down the bottom but uh, they are getting uh, the worst of it up there in these muddy trails so they are heading down the descent there they've got to be careful they know that there have been issues for the race leaders the cm.com race leaders amy wakefield and candace lill a dented rim has cost that team up to 20 minutes uh, if not uh, more they're eating way back at that and trying to pull their way back into uh, the uh, top five and no doubt top three but it's been a tough day but the beneficiaries lil at least a uh, lacourt and a loss at, well if they keep it steady and safe for the rest of their ride today they could well be wearing those uh, cm.com orange jerseys come the end of the stage today and uh, they've already passed the uh, the 50 kilometer mark in the women's category as we see uh, the sign of the fact that the uh, the men's category will be arriving soon the leaders in the men's category leaders on the stage the uh, the matt beers and christopher blevins here they come this is uh, chris blevins and matt beers storming to the uh, finish of a dramatic stage here at lawrence but they will pick up another stage with their fourth of the week as they cross the line now chris blevins and uh, matt beers and matt beers have taken the stage win in uh, just the most remarkable fashion they've kept it uh, steady they've managed to avoid all the manner of pitfalls that to present themselves on a day like this a stormy day it has been here at uh, but, but beers the south african marathon champion exhaustion mud splattered uh, face and uh, blevins have emptied their tanks today for toyota specialized 91 well he woke up earlier this morning to watch the la lakers beat the oklahoma thunder which gave him an absolute thrill and uh, now he's just uh, added to that with a stage victory here and a step closer perhaps to a first absolute cape epic victory and, uh, really fantastic job done by blevins and beers and for them it's all about you know starting the clock and seeing you know what sort of gap they have on uh, SRAM, uh, Scott SRAM team and also the speed company racing so yes they finished the stage stage but eyes will and focus will very much be on the clock absolutely the clock is ticking for beers and blevin seven minutes was the gap to our beer speed company racing 539 to uh, scott sram mtb at the start of the stage so much has happened in this stage uh, to affect the overall standings and now they are waiting to see where they will uh, be come those uh, when those teams come into the uh, to the uh, finish straight well today the stage was shortened uh, from 78 kilometers originally planned uh, due to the conditions and prioritizing rider safety and uh, we are back with the women's category the leaders on the stage today we have uh, vera Lorza and kim lacourt uh, with all to gain they will uh, possibly know what happened or is that something has happened to the uh, leaders of the race the orange jersey wearers of lil and wakefield they won't know exactly they won't have wor a full description as to the extent of the damage but they'll be aware that they have another stage win in their grasp. Well, Chris Blevins uh, is uh, the man who's uh, taken a seat uh, with relief now, the day over. And uh, Jazz Kush is uh, going to have a chat to him very, very shortly. But uh, he'll be delighted with the way uh, they have gone. Uh, the Toyota Specialized 91 team have won the stage today. And they'll be looking back to the clock for sure. 
and uh, here comes Matt Beers having greeted uh, family and uh, friends, <laughs> giving his face a wipe down. Um, he's the most uh, relaxed, uh, easygoing uh, young man. Like, likewise, Chris Brevard. I think they're quite uh, well suited personality wise, uh, and uh, they will be pretty excited with the way things are turning out here at the Absa Cape Epic. But as Riders, they'll know these things Chris, happen. Chris Levin's absolute so carnage up. behind you there. You guys obviously wouldn't have known what was there. Were you guys talking? Were you just put your head down and, and head for the finish? Um, we did see it actually. I was right behind Lucas when uh, I think his derailleur pulley hit the ground. So um, that's obviously a massive mechanical. Um, thankfully for them, we were pretty close to the tech zone. But uh, yeah, anything can happen. And when the, when the weather's that crazy, especially. So um, we stayed smooth. We stayed on our bikes for the most part, and uh, we just charged. Let's talk a bit about the conditions under the wheel. It seemed super soggy. How difficult is it to put the power down when it's like that? Oh, yeah, it's totally different. It was uh, similar to, to Snowshoe last year, which was maybe the muddiest race I've ever done. Um, we had good tires, on the, uh, pretty good mud tire in the front. Uh, maybe could have had one in the rear, but there were so many fast rolling road sections as well. But yeah, the single track was slow moving for sure. So. And now the clock starts? Yeah. yeah. And tell me how important is it to be staying in a, in a bed tonight and having a proper shower? Yeah, it's nice. Um, I'm not sure the campers are going to get out of that field, so um, we feel lucky to have a good spot to, to chill, and obviously tomorrow's a big day. We'll let you go get cleaned up. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Chris Blevins talking there to Jazz Kushka and uh, yep, absolutely uh, exhausted. And uh, we just uh, saw there whilst Chris was talking, Scott Tram MTB uh, riding home. Uh, three minutes and 50 seconds down. Actually a remarkable performance from the Scott Tram team. Just uh, in obviously with the massive changes that we've seen in the race so far with the uh, be a Leard Speed Company having a disastrous uh, mechanical we heard uh, Chris Blevin saying that he saw the pulley wheel from the derailleur hit the ground and immediately in that moment he would have known how serious the uh, the issue was and uh, he will he probably have done the mental calculations one of the most intelligent riders in the field you'll be able to uh, you'll know full well that that is a 10 minute repair for sure so top two in the men's uh, race in obviously uh, the key finishes today will be Obia Liet Speed Company and just how much time they are able to recoup after that disaster they suffered. Well, here are the leading women on the uh, stage and uh, the virtual uh, orange jersey wearers in the CM.com women's category, Kim LaCourt and Vera Loza. Well, they know that they are in that uh, situation, probably uh, also have an idea that they are riding themselves into, if not uh, the jersey, then very, very close to it. Yeah, of course, that's, uh, that's uh, the interest, uh, interesting question, whether they, they know or not. Because remember, they were already a little bit up the road when Amy and Candice had that huge, huge uh, uh, impact or the uh, mechanical to their rear wheel. And uh, we have seen this team going stronger and stronger day by day, continuing to take uh, stage wins. So we did expect for them to really, really work their way towards, uh, you know, the, the overall GC, the orange jerseys. But now it seems like, you know, they will grab them today and uh, you will get to ride them tomorrow uh, on the stage. Questions, of course, is if they can, you know, maintain the lead. Well, for sure, if the uh, likes of Lil and Wakefield lose the orange jerseys today, they will be hyper motivated tomorrow. Here come uh, the third place team on today's stage. Is this the Bulls Mavericks uh, team? It is. It is Alban Lacata and Axel uh, Rudel Cordina, his 23 year old French partner. And they are going to come and put together the best stage this year for the uh, Bulls team by a long way. Uh, he's a hard man, is Alban Lacata, and his French uh, partner is a young man. He was the silver medalist of the French uh, Marathon Champs behind Stefan Tempier. And they've got third place on the stage today, which will give them absolute uh, delight. And uh, coming in in fourth place, Canada Vas Arabe, uh, Bomata and Munoz. So this is another excellent day for this pair. Another great day. They'll be a little disappointed that they didn't uh, make the podium after yesterday's performance in the women's team. 
Both was Arabay, the Spanish outfits, on ALA, Miguel Minos Marino, and Roberto Boa. The uh, Mavericks, they're calling themselves the Bulls Mavericks. They'll be very happy with today's performance. We saw them all, all four of the Bulls riders uh, crossing the line together way back yesterday. They looked like they were just consolidating, just uh, having an easier day and uh, making up for it certainly with a podium on today's stage. Well, 30 year old uh, Peter Vakoc and his uh, Swiss partner, Mark Stutzman, uh, the 31 year old, have just crossed the line. Another, they've had a very good day as well, riding uh, away from their their senior team, uh, Martin Storsik and Andreas Servalt. They've got also got stronger and stronger. They stayed with them when they needed them. And maybe they've been given free reign now to just uh, ride as uh, best they possibly can, as hard as they can. Because the GC, uh, in terms of a top three place for Canyon Northwave, is not uh, likely to happen this year. Well, it's that sort of day, is it? Mud everywhere. And uh, I think the smiles are as uh, anything or relief at having completed today's stage in these brutal, brutal conditions for bike, body, uh, bike and body today. Rakoc and uh, Stutzman uh, went through the finish line at around about uh, four and a half minutes off the lead of Toyota Specialized 91. The clock is still ticking. We are waiting for the Ophir Liet Speed Company team. And here we have them in the picture now. They have uh, been charging. We saw them gain 30 seconds in the first. As soon as they got that uh, mechanical sort out, they gained 30 seconds back on the, the at the time checks. Here in the Epic, though, I really enjoyed it now. It was a uh, terrible weather today. Uh, it was the same like yesterday, but uh, we managed to have a really good pace. Um, uh, only problem I had uh, with the chain, uh, always chain suck, so I tried to not push too hard to break the chain and then the podium would be gone. But we were chasing all the time for the podium today and uh, we had really good legs, so we started well and um, uh, he did an incredible job. Uh, this, he's on fire, this guy. And in all your years of the Cape Epic, would you say that this is potentially the worst weather you've ever ridden in? Probably, yeah, we had a few in the early years, but um, uh, now in the previous years now, it's, it was never, never that bad. So it was more the heat, but yeah, this is, but actually I like this better. Um, it looks like shooting the European guys a little bit more. So uh, we had fun out there. We'll let you go get clean up and enjoy the celebrations. Thank you, and tomorrow another podium. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's uh, Axel Rudel uh, Cordina and his partner, the uh, legendary Alban Licata, who's been here time and time again. Uh, William Pirelli rolling in, Fabian Rabenstein, the European champion there, under the mud uh, spattered jersey. He is the European champion's jersey. And coming in towards the finish, this is the yellow jersey. So they have stormed this uh, second half of this uh, race in a typical uh, fashion. It is uh, Lucas Baum. And uh, this is not quite them yet, but they are close uh, to the finish. So they are charging towards the uh, finish line. There they come in the background, Baum and Egger, uh, trying to regain that uh, time they've lost today. They started the day for the first time. They rode in yellow today. And, well, maybe uh, that missed pedal stroke from uh, Gail Gega on the start line was a bad sign because they've had a terrible mechanical. They've lost huge amounts of time today and they've lost it with that. They've lost the yellow jerseys as well. 10 minutes and 33 seconds uh, behind they have come in. Tristan Nokia and Adrian Voices, the uh, two team, uh, the, the riders just ahead of them, they've had an excellent day as well. They're the specialized 91 2. But what a day for the yellow jerseys uh, today. Not the way they would have wanted uh, to have ridden in the yellow jerseys. But, uh, well, we know they are aggressive and they attack all the while. That's the way they uh, want to do it. Uh, so they're going to have to uh, come out tomorrow firing on all cylinders once again. We're going to have one of the most exciting final days in the history of this race. All top three uh, teams on the, on the GC, and they know that they, had, they have the uh, ability and the chance to actually be the one winning the race overall and being in yellow after tomorrow. But it's, uh, it's some very different uh, cards at hand that the, the teams have. We know tomorrow Scott Schramm will be going into the stage in yellow, but what we've seen the past uh, couple of days is that they are the, the team out there that are struggling the most. Absolutely. So the scenario is amazing. Here's Jazz and the uh, yellow jerseys. First one. Huge 
disappointment today. How do you manage that after it happens and stay calm and try and chase back? Yeah, it was not too easy. Um, it took us quite a long time. Uh, we were quite lucky that uh, it happened right after the tech zone. And I don't know uh, if it's uh, allowed to go back. We were struggling a bit, but then we decided just to go back because we had no other uh, opportunity. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we had to change the whole uh, like shadow stuff, um, really regular, and also the chain. Um, yeah, and also the way back was like it was like one k or one and a half to go back. So oh, we had like to do three kilometers more, and uh, the whole uh, yeah. I think we, we did quite a nice uh, mechanic job, but uh, <laughs> part of it, um, Lucas crashed twice after that. Uh, I think he was also a bit struggling with the pace uh, after it, and I felt quite, quite good today, so yeah, a bit uh, unlucky. Yeah. And that kind of mechanical, you, you practice those changes to fix all of that? Oh, yeah, I mean, we are mechanicals our, for ourselves, so we used to do it, do it, but not but uh, 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 under, with a mini tool. tool and with and the the pressure, so. How much uh, time did you lose today? Uh, 11 minutes, something? Not 100% sure. Huh? Not 100% sure, but we'll have to check the okay. official time there. Because I stopped something and I, I thought that were the leaders, but I'm not sure. And if, if I stopped right, it was only five or six minutes, but I think I'm wrong. Well, let's go back and have a look. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Well, they don't even know they've lost 10 minutes and 33. Uh, we think. Neil, not, not, not. Well, we're going to still wait for the uh, official timing check. So uh, there is a little bit of uh, difficulty with the timing, with uh, the conditions we've had out there and the communications. But we're going to be double checking on that official time and uh, we'll be showing you the graphics as soon as we have word on that. This is stage six, uh, then uh, the stage one by Matt Beers and Chris Blevins of Toyota Specialized 91 Team, three hours, 26 and 48. Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnick, four minutes and seven seconds back. Alvin Lecart and Axel Rudel Cortinat of uh, Bulls Mavericks in third, 6.57. Best day they've had, best day Canada Vass have had as well. Likewise, Stutzman at Vakoc, Rabenstein and Alleman hanging around the top uh, five or six teams. Nokia and Voices are getting stronger as well. The uh, 2021 under uh, junior world champion Voice uh, is going very well with young uh, Tristan Nokia, 11 minutes down on the stage today. No, this is uh, further down, Egger and Baum, and then Hubert de Toy. Another good day by Mbuko Typedev as they try and make inroads on the Absa African jersey leaders, Phil Bass and Alex Miller. Sievold and Storsek of Canyon Northwave completing the top 10 in the men's race at the moment here at Lawrence Fit. So this is a look at the general classification. Unconfirmed, this is not the official general classification. These are just as they've come in now. This may change, but uh, Schurter and Frischnick will be in the yellow jerseys tomorrow. Beers and Blevins, 132, 532 to Egger and Baum. And then, uh, well, big gap back to uh, Ravenstein and Alaman, Sivol Stosek, Bomata, Munoz, Moreno. And we'll look to make time tomorrow. Vakoc and Stutzman for Canyon Northwave. So it's all uh, unfolding in dramatic fashion here at Lonesford uh, as we await now the leaders in the uh, CM.com women's race. Oof, well, it's uh, <laughs> step back and take a breath and uh, prepare for the next bit of drama, which is the, the women's race. Yeah, and the women's race, it's uh, highly dramatic today. Uh, we see uh, Kim LeCord and Vera Luisa uh, out there in the lead, in the front, and while they were going strong, we saw the team uh, behind them, the Orange Lisa Leaders jersey with Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill, having a huge mechanical uh, broken wheel, which cost them around, as far as we know, maybe something like 20 minutes on the day. And we know that going into today, uh, Kim and Vera, they had uh, they had to catch up th around 13 minutes. They were around 13 minutes behind on GEC. And uh, so virtually they are the leaders right now. So it's going to be so exciting going into tomorrow. 
Yeah, you can bet that uh, Amy and uh, Candice will be trying to, to close that gap and narrow that lead uh, down from uh, seven, maybe six, maybe five minutes going into uh, tomorrow. But uh, they are losing the uh, jerseys. I think that's uh, that's uh, fait accompli. And that Kim LaCourt and Vera Lossa, uh, well, we two days ago, they, you asked them, you know, you, what about the orange jersey? And said, that's why we're here. That's why we, we're racing. And uh, here they are. Uh, Amy, at least Avira and Kim, uh, they they they're going to earn that get that jersey um, by the, yeah by the nature of the Absa Cape Epic and uh, what can happen and uh, every team in this field knows exactly what that's about. It can happen to anyone at any time. So they will uh, look to keep it steady as they make their way towards the finish here. Uh, Vera on the front, she. Uh, most of the uh, the stage yesterday it was Kim on the front and uh, I think they're just nursing it here making sure they don't have any issues at all uh, keep it steady keep it safe along the irrigation canal here and apologies for the break up in uh, the transmission it is uh, yep, it almost up I say it's uh, amazing that we can get what we can out of the mountains up at the top of the mountains uh, in these sort of conditions incredible uh, winds rain and uh, mud that uh, not only the riders but everyone around uh, the event is dealing with including the uh, uh, wonderful cameramen and uh, crew out on the route Well, this is stage six of the uh, 2023 Absa Cape Epic, the 19th edition of uh, the race that measures all through the untamed Western Cape. And uh, certainly uh, this year has delivered uh, some uh, really tough conditions. Stage one in Amanis was uh, played out with gale force winds up on the top of the uh, Overberg Mountains the riders had to deal with but not the heat that this event has experienced, and certainly 2022 was uh, that brutal uh, heat here at uh, Lowensford. This year, a very, very different uh, weather scenario for the riders to deal with. Rain, wind, and mud. Let's go to the finish line. Uh, Jazz Kushka has got uh, a guest with him. Andre, back in yellow after a really tough day. You must be uh, really satisfied with that. Yeah, for sure. I was uh, at the start. I really struggled to keep the pace with the speed company. Uh, the second half I felt better and then we saw them coming towards us, speed company. So, yeah, we, we were racing for yellow again and then, yeah, we were really motivated, but we also had some issues with the bikes, like everybody. So really tough day, like to keep pushing through that and also the track i think for the amateurs is gonna be really really tough because it was for us as well like the trails already super slippery and yeah kudos to everybody is who is finishing today and tell me with yellow into the grand finale how do you approach tomorrow yeah as we are racing now uh with or against the uh, specialized for sure uh, we have the, our eyes on them but I'm quite confident if I can make it over uh, the first half of the race and we're still in, in the leader group that uh, we can finish off strong. We look forward to seeing it. All the best. Thank you. And refreshing it. Interesting. Uh, nice to hear from him. Uh, having a thought for the amateurs in this field because if it was tough for the, the uh, professional riders, uh, it's going to be even tougher for the amateurs, not just because uh, they are going a bit slower and having spending more time out there, but uh, more rain. And of course, the tracks are getting ridden uh, in and uh, uh, mud is just getting thicker and thicker. So, uh, yeah, absolutely uh, a kudos to every rider who finishes today. We just saw Paige Eurostil come in there. Phil Bass and uh, Alex Miller, the leaders in the Absa African jersey category. And uh, they should still have that lead, despite the fact that Peter de Toy and Marco Hubert have uh, finished ahead of them. But uh, the gap was quite sizable. Uh, I don't know if they will... Uh, well, they've sort of ma made some inroads into that uh, jersey, but not yet take the uh, Absa Africa jersey. Yeah, these conditions uh, are getting worse and worse. 
they truly are. But um, <laughs> it was pretty cool to hear and read that he was still optimistic and uh, looking towards uh, tomorrow, the final day. Like he said, yeah, he know that he's suffering. He know that he's sometimes on the limit, you know, on the climbs. But uh, he said, okay, my only goal tomorrow is to make it over those uh, first uh, tough climbs. And, uh, you know, then the he felt more confident that you know, that they, they couldn't maintain yellow uh, also uh, all the way towards the end. So he already uh, knows what's in store for tomorrow and uh, he's still optimistic, so that's a good sign. Yeah, absolutely. And he the, he said, yeah, we, we're racing against uh, specialized uh, Beers and Blevins, but they'd uh, be uh, careful not to, t to take their eye off uh, Egger and Baum tomorrow. Um, we know what they can do. We don't yet uh, have complete confirmation what that gap will be but yeah those first few climbs are going to be critical because uh, the chasing teams are going to use that uh, they have to really as a launch pad for sure tomorrow you we will see a sprint out of the from the start line it's going to be a race for everyone to win and um, for sure you can never count out a speed company we know that they they can be so, so, so fast. So it's really all super open tomorrow. We're watching Vincenzo Nibli, winner of all three Grand Tours on the road. And he is finishing with his partner, Samuel Aporna. Very hard day out. We saw that yesterday, he, uh, some of the other riders were talking about Vincenzo, saying that he was in a world of pain. He had a crash and uh, adapting very nicely in fact to uh, mountain bike stage racing uh, we spoke to uh, Hans Baking yesterday and he said that he's in good uh, Vincenzo Nibli is in good hands and uh, Hans Baking referred to Samuel Aporo as the master class of any partner you could hope for so looking uh, forward to seeing what uh, the Italian pairing does tomorrow in the grand finale stage this is going to be a very busy place. Uh, the bike wash today, and uh, look at the mud on the ground. Uh, that's the, and these are just a few bikes in. Uh, remember, we've got over a thousand bikes that are going to come through the bike wash today. And they came in looking very brown, and it's quite, quite uh, it's one of those pleasing things to see the the colours underneath emerging as they spray off all of the mud. We saw there earlier the uh, Trinity Racing teams are specialised in that uh, pink colour, the mud coming off and. The Canyon North Wave team characterized by the uh, lime green canyons. There's the media e-bike uh, getting its uh, uh, spruce up, which is a, a good sign. That looked like Stefan Sam's bike. Um, I think just come off the course following the men's category. Stefan Sam, a three-time winner, and uh, enjoying watching a rider's eye view of the race and giving us all a rider's eye view of the race. And uh, we're very grateful for the coverage from the Bulls media e-bikes. We were unable to get the uh, images from the helicopter that the conditions are very dangerous out there for flying. So we were relying heavily on the motorbikes and the Bulls media e-bikes to bring us the pictures. Yeah, and uh, thank you to them for doing a great job. Uh, the mechanics today. <laughs> It's one of those days. We had Patrick Morwood in here from uh, Pige yesterday talking about uh, the maintenance of these bikes and, and uh, you know, the rebuild. He said, well, after muddy days, yes. Today, your bike at the end of a day like this, uh, complete uh, strip and, and uh, uh, fix up? Yeah, because the on a day like today, the water makes its way into everything. The bearings... Uh, yeah, the chain, the cassettes, the the brakes, everything needs to be taken apart and cleaned and greased and put back together. And uh, I'm sure that most most bikes will have um, brake pads uh, swapped uh, on a day like today. You know, the the brake pads really wear out just because of the the amount of water and uh, and mud out there on the course. So it's almost like a completely fresh out of the the box uh, bike that the at least in the, the sharp end of the field that the, that the riders will jump on uh, tomorrow. Well, we uh, caught up with uh, Lachlan Morton yesterday to do one of our uh, bike checks, which you'll see on the, uh, on the Epic Series channels coming up soon. And uh, Lachlan Morton's bike uh, was in pieces just before we arrived. We were due to arrive yesterday at around about 3 o'clock in the afternoon to go and chat to him. And at that point, his bicycle was still in several parts and his uh, technician, Tim Hop was Hopper, was uh, just asked us for a few minutes to uh, put the bike back together again and uh, have a look at that feature 
tune into the uh, Epic Series channels and you'll, you'll be able to see just something quite special that uh, Lachlan Morton is riding this year. Forward to see that. Talking of the bike checks, Neil's been very, very busy. Uh, I think you took a visit uh, to Buff Megaman. We also spoke to Hans Becking and we, uh, we chatted to him about uh, what the what Megamo is. Let's have a look at the bike check. So we caught up with uh, Hans Becking, a fan favorite, and he's going to tell us all about I Megamo. Hans, the word Megamo is written on the bike, the heart of the bike, which is the frame. Tell us a little bit about the frame. Well, um, we use the Megamo track. It's launched last year from, from Megamo. Megamo is a, a small family company from Girona in Spain. And we're growing very, very fast. Um, together with the team, we're working a lot on developing the frame. And as you can see, we have a very modern bike. Um, the setup is for 120, 120 or 100, 100, 110. It's, it's really up to, to the rider, the choice. And yeah, we're growing and growing. And as a rider, I, I ride many bikes and I'm, I'm extremely happy with Megamo so far. Hans, is there anything special about this bike that uh, is slightly different from the stock standard bike? Um, something that's specially for the Absa Cape Epic? Yeah, for sure. We need to be prepared a bit more for eight days in South Africa than a normal race. The tires look basic, but we, we use some extra protection inside. And we have some magic parts that are helping us uh, to be, oh, here it is, to be more safe. Well, this is the, the insert from Panzer we use with the team. Um, we use it in the rear. So basically what it does, it's an extra protection to don't get any snake bites. So if we hit a rock, we won't have the effect that the tire gets, gets stuck between the rim and the, and the rock or whatever it's going to hit it. Thanks very much, Hans. Great to hear about uh, the Megamo and to understand a bit more about the Spanish brand. Thank you so much for, for letting showing us this beautiful piece of art. Hans Becking and his uh, beautiful piece of art that he calls uh, he calls his bike. Uh, character is Hans Becking. Uh, Lovely uh, Dutch rider with uh, Jose Diaz riding as one of the two buff mega mo teams. They all came in together today. So here we go, the podium today at uh, stage six of the Absa Cape Epic. And there we go. Top step is Beers and Blevins taking the stage win. The Bulls Mavericks uh, is uh, in... Uh, jerseys of Alban Lakata and Axel uh, Rudel Cortina and second place today the Scottsram mountain bike uh, racing team Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnecht. So great day for the Bulls Mavericks on the uh, podium for the Bulls team they've uh, come strong later in the week and that's an interesting combination they're very experienced uh, former world champion Alban Lakata and young Frenchman Axel uh, Rudolf Cortina. The Bulls bringing some young uh, riders in and uh, learning the Absa Cape Epic ropes from a man who knows them uh, better than most, Albert Lakata. And the Bulls program certainly looking to invest in the younger riders of uh, of the in the on the scene in the mountain bike stage race scene. And uh, as Alban Lakata's partner certainly living up to living up to the hope. But to see uh, the uh, yellow jerseys presented on the backs of uh, Scott Sram MTB Racing, leaping up to the top step. I think he's still got his uh, cycling shoes on. Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnecht uh, back in yellow. One day out of yellow, and they are back in it for the critical day, the final stage of the Absa Cape Epic. What a dramatic turn of events. We really saw and we predicted that Scott Sram we were fading a little bit in the momentum falling in the favor of the uh, Orbia Liet Speed Company team and uh, the Toyota Specialized 91 team not to be today. Not at, uh, at all. So tomorrow it does uh, set it up for the most uh, amazing uh, final day of the Absa Cape Epic. Truly something we haven't seen in many, many years. And uh, 
Yeah, all of these top three GC teams, uh, I wonder how well they will sleep tonight. For sure, it will be all, you know, all about recovery and preparing for tomorrow because it's going to be like a cross-country race the whole day. And it's not a cross-country course tomorrow, it's a marathon day tomorrow. From Lawrenceford to Val de Vive, you can see that a year ago, we went from Stellenbosch to Val de Vive, appreciably shorter. Uh, yes, of course, it's a little bit different, but uh, uh, last year we saw the uh, buff, uh, the uh, speed company racing team uh, snatch the lead in sensational fashion with a marauding attack over the mountains, uh, Simonsburg Mountain particularly. And uh, tomorrow, well, another chance uh, for this to unfold again. They will have to make up over five minutes. And uh, Scott Sram will be uh, concerned about the power and strength of Beers and Blevins because they won the stage today. And uh, they will start tomorrow a little bit closer on general classification to uh, chase them down. So that's uh, going to be the drama that uh, we can enjoy tomorrow. With so many dynamics playing their role tomorrow. There's the prestigious... Uh, the chance of a prestigious stage win for the grand finale. Those riders that might have been holding back, saving themselves for the day, they'll be at play. And uh, let's not forget that uh, the Orbeard Leard Speed Company team will remember they'll be inspired by their last year's performance on the grand finale. So that will certainly play a role. Could pull the, uh, the potential race leaders and the race winners, uh, the Toyota Specialized 91 team. So tomorrow is a day not to miss. Tune in from the very start yeah. is what we recommend. Yeah, hit your wagon if you want a stage when you hit your wagon to that little trio up front there and just uh, it'll be the best place to watch the watch the uh, drama from except for where you are now because we'll have our Bulls Media e-bikes all over that battle at the, the front of the race there and uh, it is going to be white hot all the way to uh, Val de uh, for sure it is. Uh, I, I cannot wait. Uh, it's, it's quite unbelievable how the, cha the race has changed up and down the whole, the whole time. Uh, we did see uh, speed company racing, like when they're out there physically, they, are s they come much better prepared, uh, much better shape, I, I believe, than, uh, than last year. But then this like, crazy, crazy, crazy mechanical happens today, just really, you know, resetting uh, everything. So, um, yeah, Oof, it will be dramatic tomorrow. Absolutely fascinating, and we can't wait for that to unfold. We also can't wait to see our women come in, because uh, Vera Lossa and Kim Lacourt are the uh, leaders out on the course at the moment, and the overall race leaders, as we uh, reflect back on our men's race today. And uh, this is where it all started, stage six. There you can see the Gail Gregg in the yellow jersey going backwards as the riders swarmed around him and uh, passed him and uh, he had to do some work to catch up to uh, his partner back of the uh, field here big field of uh, elite men at this stage the rain didn't appear to be too hard but uh, what was hard was the pace up front being set by uh, this uh, man Nino Schurter and Scott Sram MTB racing together with his uh, man uh, Andre Frischnecht, uh, yellow jerseys under pressure from the start as there was a little bit of a, a thought that uh, the Specialized and Scott teams would uh, attack the yellow jerseys from the outset and they did just that and uh, try to put pressure on the yellow jerseys uh, from the very outset. Uh, it can be said that it uh, planned that worked for them uh, today. Uh, although Scott's Tram MTB were not able to stay with the uh, pace up front to set uh, the yellow jerseys on the front up the uh, early climbs. Andre Frischneck was the man who uh, all week has been slightly the weaker of the two uh, riders. He's riding alongside the best of all time, but uh, he was the man who was uh, going to be the, the weak link if there was to be one in this lead group. So there they go. Plevins and Beers on the back there. Chasing was uh, the Bulls Mavericks team. Alban Lacarta and Axel Rudel Cortinad also there, William Pirelli and a Canyon Northway, Vakoc and Stutzman enjoying a good day today. Some people thrive in these conditions and really enjoy them and uh, embrace it, others don't. And uh, not embracing the pace uh, was Andre Frischnick. He started to lose time, back came Nino Schurter. Nino Schurter nurturing his partner through the stage and a really good move from them to just take it at their own pace and uh, just knowing what was to come. Obviously, we're watching this in retrospect and uh, just uh, Andre Frischnick in a bit of a dark moment for him. They, no doubt the Scott Stram team wishes that they were able to keep the pace at the very front of the field. Eger and Baum storming ahead. 
alongside uh, the pairing of Blevins and Beers. And these two teams were in the lead on the day with uh, Blevins really taking the lion's share of the work at the uh, at the front. And, uh, maybe you could ride, say riding in a little bit of defense, but certainly keen on gaining more time on Scott Sram, George Egger and Lucas Baum. Who weren't letting them go at this stage. Uh, they were certainly being put under a little bit of pressure by uh, the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team who were determined to try and eat into that uh, 5 minutes and 39 on Scott Sram. They obviously knew now that uh, uh, Henri Frischneck was under pressure. So the motivation at this stage for Beers and Blevins was to uh, try and move closer to second place uh, whilst uh, the yellow jerseys hung with them. And uh, from their perspective, the yellow jerseys at this stage in the race, happy to let uh, this happen play out as it was now. But uh, then we heard uh, Chris Blevins, he talked about that he all of a sudden saw a little piece of equipment flying off from uh, Lucas uh, Baum's uh, bike. And he knew that uh, something was not well. But uh, yeah, shortly we will show you pictures of the drama that were about to happen. And as this race, is, as we've seen in this race, Wout Allemann and uh, Fabian Rabensteiner were uh, going uh, hard. They've been there and thereabouts. They were on the podium earlier in the week. But uh, Canada Vass, Bulls Mavericks, Canyon Northwave 2 were uh, having an excellent day. Marco Hubert and Peter Detroit likewise. Detroy having removed his glasses. Not much time to take them and uh, tuck them into his uh, shirt. But the trails uh, tacky and uh, thrilling for the riders. But this was not thrilling. This is the issue that uh, has uh, turned this race on its head. Lucas Baum. The jockey on his uh, derailleur dropping the jockey wheel and uh, now having to uh, ride back to the tech zone, about a K uh, back to the tech zone. Uh, and at one stage having to stop, break the chain and just uh, get pushed back. Well, the riders, uh, we have uh, talked about it already. The riders, uh, the pro riders have uh, allocated boxes at each tech zone where they can choose what parts they leave in there. And uh, fortunately for the, uh, for the pair, of Ego and Baum that uh, they could replace that rear derailleur and uh, it was all about keeping a cool head at this stage. They've already lost several minutes and also having to backtrack as well. Not an ideal situation at all, especially in that leader's jersey. And remember these riders are skilled uh, not only on the bike, bikes, but also when it comes to bike repairing. But here in these conditions, everything is so muddy, so dirty, so it's definitely not an easy job so really impressive work by this team you know to to really do it as uh, quick as uh, possible and it is really quick bike repair what we're seeing here as i said they're, they're the mechanics they're a small team they've got their pa their fathers and their masters and themselves meanwhile blevins and beers were capitalizing on uh, the misfortune of obelit uh, Speed Company Racing in no uncertain terms they were going to go and charge hard to try and uh, you know, extend their advantage over this pair on the stage. They were digging deep. Uh, Gail Egger in the interview shortly after they'd finished made reference to the fact that he wasn't sure if he could go back to the tech zone. In cross-country Olympic racing you are not allowed to go back. If you pick up a mechanical 200 meters outside your uh, tech zone you have to keep going in the direction of the route and back to the tech zone and that can cost you a lot of time but he was able to uh, go back. Meanwhile this was uh, Blevins and Beers who put the finishing touches to another fantastic stage win for Toyota Specialized 91. Delight for the team, delight for Blevins and uh, Beers. And uh, this uh, combination of Nino Schurter and Andre Frischneck uh, managed to hold it all together and in fact rode a very, very good stage in the end to finish in second place. First time on the podium this week for Axel uh, Rudel Cortina and uh, Alban Lecartre of the Bulls Mavericks. They finished in third place. The yellow jerseys, uh, the first day they've worn the yellow jerseys, Gail Gega and Lucas Baum. It's been a disastrous day for them as they roll in behind Tristan Nokia and Andrea Boisius, and they have lost uh, copious amounts of time in the end, and with it, the yellow jerseys. The podium looked like this. Toyota Specialized 91 on the top step, followed by um, Schurter and uh, Frischnecht, and then uh, the Bulls Mavericks. Yellow jerseys back on the shoulders of Scott Tram, MTB, Nino Schurter and Andre Freshnick. Broad smiles from them. So that's how the men's race unfolded here. 
snatches of it, I'm afraid, yeah, our coverage not 100% today due to this hectic weather that uh, we're uh, having here in the Western Cape, a real stormy day. Beers and Blevins, four minutes and seven seconds ahead of Schurch and Frischnecht. So they started the day five minutes and 39 behind them. So they've closed that gap significantly. Lakata and Rudel Cortina in third place, first time on the podium for the Austrian and the Frenchman of Bulls Mavericks. Great day out for Nokia and Boisius, the youngsters, and Dager and Baum finishing 11 minutes down. Hubert de Toy in ninth place, 12.07, and then Sewell and Stosek at 13 down. Pedrigal 7C Economy had a good day yesterday. Despite uh, their issues, uh, they had a fall uh, early on, but they recovered well from that. Svensson and Morton in 12th place today seem to be getting stronger as the week progresses. We do apologize for not being able to bring you uh, coverage of the women's race just uh, at the moment due to that uh, inclement weather up the mountain. Schurter and Frischneck, 1 minute and 32, their lead going into the final stage of the Absa Cape Epic over Matt Beers and Chris Blevins, the uh, South African champion and the American former uh, short track world champion Blevins. Uh, they've got a day on their hands tomorrow as they chase down the yellow jerseys and worry and try and defend against Edgar and Baum, who we know will be giving absolutely everything in typical fashion to chase down the uh, yellow jerseys. Five minutes and 32 seconds down uh, they are. And uh, it's going to be an incredible day's racing here at the Epsi Cape Epic as they head to the grand finale at uh, Val de Ville on the final day. So, what is happening in the uh, women? Well, this is the time split, and this just is mind-boggling. Because Efficient Infinity and Sure are leading the stage by 9 minutes and 19 seconds. Over 91 Songo Specialized have ridden themselves back into second place, with Canada Vass now in third. And E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. started the day in the overall lead by 13 minutes, or 34 minutes down. Devastating, devastating day for the team. And uh, uh, yes, seeming it looks like at this moment uh, they're about to 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 lose the jerseys, uh, which yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit heartbreaking to see. You know, it it was a mechanical that was taking them out of the the race today, and really putting them back quite far. But it's uh, it's part of the racing. And and uh, we heard the point made by Gail Gega. They were lucky it happened as close to the tech zone as it did. And one gets the feeling that uh, Amy and uh, Candace had to, to ride a long way on that uh, uh, shattered back wheel to get to the tech zone. And that would have cost them. Uh, that that's, is the luck well, and the bad luck uh, that goes with the Apps Cape Epic. Definitely. And, you know, in this case, they are on different equipment, different bikes, uh, different wheels, I believe, because what they could have done was to actually swap the wheels, you know, so Candace, the what well, we look look like the stronger rider within the this pairing could uh, ride with the, the the wheel in the worst conditions to give you know Amy just some sort of uh, <laughs> some sort of help but it wasn't the case here so definitely uh, a tough a tough day for them brutally hard is the Absa Cape epic it uh, really doesn't spare anyone whether you're reading the wearing the leaders jerseys or you're right uh, at the back just ahead of the uh, the hyenas absent cape epic to living drama here on this uh, stormy saturday in uh, the uh, helderberg basin at lawrenceford
today is Kronenberg Day. Um, I think anyone who's done the Epic a couple of times has been has had this mountain thrown at them. UCI men on a go 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 on the Some of the uh, images from our Queen stage yesterday uh, as the riders came from Oak Valley to Lawrenceford. And uh, yeah, it was muddy and rainy up on Groenlandberg. Got a bit sunny here at the finish, which was uh, very cool as Tumela Marke, I think, and uh, Nati Normalo, Pump for Peace. That'll be Ariane Luti's cue to get uh, busy and uh, get them uh, dry and warm down because uh, that's uh, a uh, wonderful ride by uh, that pair as these riders making their way in just behind the finish here at uh, the uh, Lawrenceford estate. So we are looking for our leading women's team, uh, Cand at least Kim Lacourt and Vera Lawson. We've been so used to saying Candace Hill and Amy Wakefield all week, but it has not been uh, their day today by any stretch of the imagination. Kim Lacourt and Vera Lawson have gone through 64 kilometers. Uh, they're the only team to have gone through there just yet. So far, yes, the only team and after four hours and five minutes, almost four, and a half, four hours and six minutes of racing, Kim Lacourt and Vera Lorza looking good for the stage and with the travails, the dramatic travails of uh, Candice Law and Amy Wakefield, with Wakefield's uh, rear wheel exploding, uh, unable to reinflate the tire, having to ride on the rim, a, not just uh, losing huge amounts of time, but also wasting a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to ride a wheel uh, on the rim, and they will have a few kilometers to go, not many kilometers, about four or five kilometers to go to the next tech zone, but it's still devastating. And also the, uh, the mental anguish they must be going through of knowing that the, the, lead, the race lead was disappearing up the trails with Kim LeCour. Laza on another good day and a storming day it's uh, it's very impressive riding uh, by these two women um, I asked them there a few days ago about their ambitions on the overall GC and I guess uh, back then they were maybe 15 17 minutes down on uh, the leading uh, women's team and they were highly motivated highly hungry to to go for for you know to still to aim higher and for sure Today, they must just be feeling, yeah, absolutely thrilled. Yeah, there's the uh, GC official, uh, uh, at least unofficial at this stage, the virtual GC. 
Uh, 20 minutes. Uh, it's qu quite astonishing. And the, well, that's the roller coaster that is the Absa Cape Epic. The highs and lows, the emotional highs and lows that these uh, riders have gone through. And uh, Amy and, uh, well, everyone's gone through it at some stage or another, but Amy and uh, uh, Candace certainly uh, have, have had the extremes of it. 11 minutes and 46 going through 64 Ks is the gap between 91 Songo Specialized, who now in second on the stage, and uh, Kim Lacourt and uh, Vera Loza. So they've ridden themselves back in uh, to uh, the top uh, two. They were at one stage behind Canada Alvas out of Bay, uh, Greta Sinberg and uh, Monica Calderon. But uh, a better day, it seems, for Sofia Gomez, Viafan and Katharina Nash. Well, we just look at the race profile, the, the route profile on stage six, 78 kilometers shortened slightly due to the conditions. And uh, as we said earlier, prioritizing safety and uh, the 2,300 meters of climbing. Yeah, it was an extremely jagged uh, profile. Just looking at it again, with the likes of Drix Drag, the climb up to Hypermotion, and the uh, second last, the one of the major climbs, characterized with some single track, and uh, last obstacle of the day, Young Wafana, and uh, much of the racing happening, and uh, in at the front end of the at the front end of the profile, up to the 31 kilometer mark, and uh, not just uh, the racing, but also the drama, of which there has been uh, plenty today, and. Uh, well, we can uh, tell you that there's going to be change in the women's uh, leader's jersey tomorrow going into the final day. And uh, well, that, that, that roller coaster we're talking about, that emotional roller coaster, uh, the extremes th that uh, both uh, Amy and, and Candace have had to deal with, with their issues on day one when perhaps they thought they were out of the race for a moment and then they taped up their... Uh, the injury and uh, managed to win that stage, establish a lead and, and have held that jersey. So they've been on a high. Mm. Yeah, just imagine, you know, having this, uh, having it, you know, overcome what seemed like the most devastating uh, episode ever, uh, having to go through surgery and stitches, you know, in the night between two extremely rough stages to have to overcome that, to come back, to actually go into Orange on the very next day. I mean, th the morale must have been on an all-time high. And, you know, looking somewhat, I wouldn't say secure, but very, very likely to take the win, you know, after tomorrow. And now it's completely upside down. Absolutely turned on its head. How will they cope with that? Uh, one, they can only wonder. Uh, the... They did show composure and calmness. I mean, they both uh, have been around the traps uh, long enough to know uh, that these things happen in mountain biking. It would have happened to them before many times. And uh, just try and uh, repair it and try and limit your losses. Try and not uh, get too uh, panicked about it. But it's easier, easy to say from where we are uh, not to get too panicked. It's very difficult to uh, do it when you're out there, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a different game. And, you know, there's so much... Uh, this race means so much to them. I mean, it's not just your, yeah, another another race. This is one of the, the highlights of their whole season. So it means really a, a lot to them. And that's why we can see, you know, that they, you know, they get, a, uh, Amy gets a cut in her arm yeah. where most people will say, you know what, I'm going to prioritize my health. I'm going to go straight to the hospital. And they were like, you know what, the race is more important we can still ride and we'll deal with it later. Yeah, any other uh, race and they would perhaps have just stepped aside and said, yeah, we'll, we'll ride another day. The NTT Masters just rolling in there, Thomas Messer and uh, Carl Platt, the legend, uh, just rolling in the, in the blue jerseys NTT Masters as we now have a look at our leading ladies. This is Vera Loza and Kimberly Lacourt, the Namibian champion and the... Uh, uh, champion of Mauritius are leading the field here coming into the finish at uh, Lawrenceford. What a day they've had. What a week they've had, uh, Vera and uh, Kim. They had issues yesterday. Vera had a, an issue with her shoe when she went down when uh, one of the Canada Vass Arabe teams rode into the back of uh, riders rode into the back of her in a puddle. She had to stop and tape up, uh, duct tape her, her shoe, and then getting back to chase back to her partner further up the road, she was bumped uh, into a bush. 
uh, not intentionally at all, but uh, that's what happens when uh, riders are, are on a narrow trail. And uh, unfortunately, both uh, she and Yolanda de Villiers ended up uh, off their bikes. Not uh, any damage done, but uh, she had to ride back up. Not only did she ride back up and join Kim LeCourt, but they then uh, set about uh, catching the teams ahead of them one by one and eventually ended at the front of the race, took the stage and rode themselves uh, right into contention. They were 13 minutes down at the start of the day. They're only here to race as hard as they can and try and win that orange jersey. The red jersey is on loan to today at this stage still because they are second in the Apps African jerseys, but the overall leaders are wearing the uh, uh, leaders, the CM.com jerseys. And uh, so today the opportunity to take uh, the overall lead has uh, fallen into their laps courtesy of the, uh, the mechanical issues. Here are the uh, Masters leaders uh, with uh, Jazz. Tommy Meiser, Carl Platz, you are shaking. It is so cold out there, but another stage victory. Yeah, it's an amazing, amazing day. It's, I don't know, I can't remember this day for, for a long time because we take the leader jersey and I think we make uh, another pass to, to win the Cape Epic this year. Carl Platz, in all your years at the Cape Epic, this must be close to one of the toughest weather conditions stage-wise that you've dealt with. I don't know why we are so stupid. <laughs> that, that, that shit. No, it was a really hard stage. I'm really, I'm looking for all the hogs still out there. Our Tommy's breakfasts are gone. We were riding just on uh, the calibers. Uh, conditions are. I thought yesterday was hard, but today it's like above average. And uh, super crazy. You're shaking. Let's go get warm. Thanks a lot. Thank Enjoy you. it. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Tom Yosa and uh, Carl Platt. Uh, Carl Platt, of course, the uh, one half of the original winning team here at the uh, Absa Cape Epic way back in 2004. And uh, he hasn't missed many. Isla, are you with us? Isla Stowe is uh, out on the trails with the women's race. Uh, <laughs> how are you going, Isla? What, what's happening there with this, uh, this uh, leading pair? It's been quite an interesting day. They've definitely been working well. I think the conditions have been tough. You know, it's changing from super tucky to super slippery in a matter of 100 meters. So I think you just need to stay alert, and that's what they've been doing. Has either one of them been uh, looked to be the stronger today, or they've been riding uh, pretty much uh, on, a, on equal footing? I think Kim's definitely just a little bit stronger, I think just trying to guide the team. Um, but Vera's doing very well in holding her own. Are they, have, you know, have you noticed whether they are aware of the situation out on the road and, and, and where they are in terms of, they're winning the stage, of course, but in terms of the, yeah. the uh, leaders? I think they know that Candice and Amy have had a mechanical. I don't know to the extent of time that they've made up today. Isla riding up a bit close to uh, or closer to the uh, two riders there. These conditions are absolutely incredible, Isla. Really, really uh, uh, tough uh, for these riders. Uh, were you able to uh, uh, be with uh, Amy and, and uh, Candice at all? Yes, I was. Um, I was there when it happened. It was quite a loud noise as soon as Amy hit the rock. Um, and you could see as they were trying to fix it, you know, I think they were very hopeful in the beginning to try to see what they could do, not really realizing the extent of the damage that was caused. Well, Isla, thanks very much. They are getting close to the finish. Isla Stowe riding the Bulls Media e-bike, just updating us on uh, conditions, on uh, the condition of the leading team there, and on the incident that uh, has turned the uh, CM.com women's race on its head here at uh, stage six of the Apscape Epic. Well, uh, the bravery of the uh, me Bulls Media e-bikes covering it and experiencing every every drop of rain and every bit of those tough conditions that the riders are experiencing putting themselves in the line of fire an admirable job but a, a nice job at times today perhaps a, a bit a bit harder a bit wetter certainly and a bit muddier 
Yeah, you want to be uh, watching the racing from uh, as close as you can, and uh, that is as good a seat as you'll find on the media e-bike, but it comes with uh, uh, its uh, difficulties. It, those are immensely heavy bikes, and they're carrying a backpack, and uh, yeah, it's a... It's uh, not a bad place to be, but uh, hard work, and uh, particularly in these conditions. So you saw Tommy Misa and, uh, and Carl Platt shivering as they got across the line. It has not stopped raining now for probably about an hour and a half uh, here at Delones, but it just keeps coming down. We saw Carl Platt. Uh, he was uh, riding this year, riding with Tommy Misa, and he's a five-time winner, winning the, uh, the race with uh, three different partners. His first time... 2004 with uh, riding with Money Haymans, the inaugural winner, and again three times with uh, Stefan Som, none other than Stefan Som, who is in fact one of the Bulls Media e bike riders uh, following the race at the moment. And uh, his final victory with Urs Huber, the Swiss rider, the Swiss marathon specialist, and Carl Platt, by his own admittance, hates the rain. He really does not enjoy the rain. We saw in 2014, in fact, uh, he, one of the uh, very rare abandons that he's had from the Absa Cape Epic, he had a crash uh, because he just, he just for a moment couldn't quite see the trail in front with the mud spraying up in his eyes, went down and caused himself an injury that uh, eventually caught up with him a couple of days later, his knee injury forcing him to abandon. So not his favorite conditions, he did get through today, fortunately, but... Uh, still out on the course having passed the 64 kilometer mark in fact the infinity efficient infinity insure have already passed the 69 kilometer mark less than five kilometers to go and approaching the finish very soon we'll be seeing them heading through the finish chute in a matter of minutes kim lacourt and vera lawza having had a fantastic day out and a fortunate day out in terms of the overall general classification. It's not something that any professional rider wants to do is inherit the lead of a race due to another team's misfortune. But uh, they know just as any that it could happen to anyone. And it is part of racing, is looking after your equipment. It is indeed. Here's the second team in the Masters, NTT Masters, coming in there. Craig Uriah and uh, Mike Posthumus having led the race uh, prior to yesterday. They lost that... Uh, lead yesterday to Carl Platt and Tommy Mesa. Close racing in that uh, NTT Masters category. Yeah, this is now uh, Vera Lossa and uh, Kim Lacourt. They're, on, uh, they're within a couple of hundred meters of the finish, just behind uh, the finish venue now. The last uh, rolled down onto the lawns and uh, they will be putting the finishing touches to another storming ride taking advantage of the stormy conditions and what uh, befell their closest rivals and they have ridden themselves into a position of a real strength here on the penultimate day of the Absa Cape Epic. They're wearing their red jerseys on loan from uh, Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill. But in a few moments' time, they will cross the finish line and put the finishing touches to a fantastic day. Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa. Lacourt looking so strong. Lossa hanging in as she has done today. But it's about finishing this uh, stage today and they will win another stage, their fourth stage win of the week. And with it will come the incredible prize of the overall lead. They won't be quite aware of it just yet, but we can tell you that Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill are over half an hour down. So the overall lead will be on the backs of these two women. What a week they've had. It just keeps getting better. Vera and uh, Candice. Uh, uh, well, the first partner that Kim Lacord had uh, riding the Absa Cape Epic was uh, the woman uh, tiling them down now, Teresa Ralph. What support they've got. They are freezing cold. Keep them, get them dry as possible, as quickly as possible, and uh, they'll recover ahead of uh, tomorrow and be able to uh, try and defend uh, that uh, CM.com uh, overall leader's jersey. Well, you said, Gerald, earlier that they might not be fully aware of the damage that uh, was incurred to the uh, overall race leaders of Wakefield and Lil. But uh, and the evidence of that was how hard they pushed to the line. Kim Lacourt didn't let up for a second. They didn't. They hardly celebrated a prestigious stage win and uh, emotions running high at the finish, knowing that they, uh, they've won the stage and they'll be looking at that clock. They uh, will be probably informed by their team manager just uh, that there is high likelihood of them inheriting that race lead. 
Yeah, they, uh, as we heard from Isla, they knew there was that there'd been problems, um, but the extent of the uh, the problems suffered by uh, the uh, leaders, uh, I don't think they were aware of. But now I think they've been told they are definitely uh, uh, going to be celebrating today, but uh, cautiously so because there's still a full day to ride to uh, Valdivi tomorrow and. Uh, well, they know that uh, so much can happen between uh, here, Lawrence Fitz, Somerset West, uh, through Stellenbosch and many of those uh, trails that uh, they've ridden uh, last year over the mountain the here at uh, the Helderberg Mountains and then over the mountains at uh, Stellenbosch. This is uh, a look at how they powered to the finish. Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa, another glorious stage win for the Mauritian and the Namibian. They've uh, been rock solid. They Vera Lossa had a fall on the opening day and had an issue with her shoes. She had to duct tape that up. And uh, that paled uh, in the end uh, because of the uh, problems and uh, the, the, the incident that happened to Amy Wakefield. And the duct tape came into play with Amy Wakefield. And uh, they lost time there, did uh, Lacourt and Lossa. And indeed in the, in the prologue a little bit. But uh, they've come roaring back uh, through the week and now on the, the brink of uh, taking the jerseys ahead of the final day. Yeah, fantastic performance from the uh, Mauritian and the Namibian. And uh, although they may have, an, may, may have inherited the situation, nonetheless, they have done all they needed to do. And one of the uh, important factors of that, of a campaign, is to just make sure that you look after your equipment. It's a, it is a random thing that could happen, breaking a rim, breaking a wheel, but uh, it's all about reducing the risk. Right, let's hear from uh, the stage winners with Annika. Kim and Vera, what a day. Are those tears of joy or rain? I think it's tears of getting all the mud out of my eyes <laughs> because there was plenty of that today. You just rode yourself into orange. How does it feel? <laughs> yeah, maybe it is tears of joy then. <laughs> really? I mean, orange. Maybe. Well, they're not over the line yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks very likely. I mean, a few days ago we spoke about the possibility of actually being in orange and I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll start the, the stage tomorrow in orange. <laughs> That's a dream country. I mean, to wear orange, add a little hope here on my finger. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, flip to pull that off on a day like today. It was so, so rough out there. It's so muddy, it's so sticky, it's so dodgy. You really just have to stay on your bike. The wind is hard. It's just rough out there. And I'm really praying for those back markers that they can just finish today. Did you have any idea about the drama that was going on behind you? We saw, um, we heard we them, heard, they yeah. were together with us. Um, and then we just heard at the feed zone that they are riding on the rim. And then we just kept it consistent. I mean, we can also feel the legs, it's day six. Um, but yeah, we didn't know we had such a big gap. But yeah, we just gave our best. And how do you actually handle conditions like this? Because it's, it's just crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know how we handled it. I All think I, I went through the same um, haul than Amy and um, luckily I didn't get any problems. But yeah, I think it's all in your head. It was really, really tough out there. I think um, probably one of the hardest day on my bike. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's difficult. I think we try to keep safe as much as possible in the downhills. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I almost fell a few times, but yeah, it's all worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and how would it feel to be riding into Val de Vie tomorrow in orange? Yeah, I mean, it's not all... Um, it's still a long old. 78 kilometers yeah, tomorrow. It's still one day, so we're going to stay with our goal, which is to be safe. And um, yeah, I think we're going to probably go with a different tactic and follow tomorrow. And um, yeah, if the legs feel good, why not go again? But yeah, I, um, I don't want to get too excited until they cross the line today. <laughs> well, all the best for tomorrow and thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Well, emotional times.
Well, Kim LaCourt and Vera Lossa, they're trying to keep their emotions in check because obviously when uh, only when the uh, uh, orange jersey leaders do cross the line will they know for sure that they are in the uh, orange jersey. In fact, they'll know um, when the time uh, that they were in deficit over 13 minutes has passed and uh, Amy Wakefield and Candace all haven't crossed the line. But uh, no other team has crossed the line yet. Uh, and uh, uh, Vera Lossa, when last we checked at 64 kilometers, Sofia Gomez, Viafan and Katharina Nash were in second place, 12 minutes down, and Greta Sinberg and uh, Monica Calderon were uh, with them pretty close. That's going to be an interesting battle for the other, uh, for uh, uh, second and third on the stage today. Calderon and uh, and uh, Steinberg were a long way back, over an hour, nearly an hour and 20 minutes back, I think, uh, on general classification. So they're unlikely to get on the podium, but they've had a couple of really strong days. They've had some fantastic days. Looking good at, again today. And the, uh, the field today has absolutely stretched out completely. And uh, even at the 69-kilometer mark, which is just shortly before the... Before <laughs> Riders charging into the uh, finish here. That's uh, Stembiso going in now. And uh, look at these riders. It's been a brutally hard day. Luanda following him. Uh, Pear Tree uh, Capital Racing uh, going home. Stembiso Msango, very, very strong. A great finish by the Dragon and Luanda just behind him. You can see here the uh, venerable Bart Brenchens and his trusty partner, as a Vedo, as, uh, they've just finished the day. They're the leaders on overall in the great and the grandmasters category. And, uh, the, uh, the Dutchman is, uh, in fact, a former Olympic champion, former world champion, and uh, former winner in the men's category of the Absa Cape Epic, also of the masters category. What the question is, will he race in the mixed category? <laughs> and when he's old enough, will he race <laughs> in the great, great grand grandmasters yeah. category? He really uh, wants to collect them all. Yeah, it'll. Yeah, we we'll wait. We we'll wait and see uh, how Bright Brenchens uh, goes. He's got eight uh, wins across all all categories so far. Uh, this is looking likely to be number nine. Uh, but uh, talking about category winners and the like is a tricky thing to do in these conditions. The of the, uh, a sodden uh, Lawrenceford uh, estate in the Helderberg Bowl just outside Somerset West. It is the venue for the penultimate stage of the 19th Absa Cape Epic. It is certainly living up to its moniker, the untamed African mountain bike race. There's nothing tamed about today's uh, weather or the trails out there. It really has been one of those brutal days for very different reasons to a year ago when the heat had topped out at uh, mid 40 degrees centigrade and uh, saw a lot of uh, riders having to abandon the race but today very very different it looks like the wind has subsided which is why the rain has been sitting with us for some time here in the Helderberg Bowl and creating uh, such treacherous and difficult conditions that have uh, has led to uh, both the men's and women's overall race categories being turned on their heads the uh, men's race will be led going into the final stage by Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnecht of the Scott Stram MTB team. Having uh, lost the jerseys yesterday, they are back in the, the yellow jerseys today after the Obea Leert Speed Company racing team had a monstrous mechanical when uh, the uh, rear derailleur of Lucas Baum's bike basically exploded uh, after the impact with a uh, piece of wire. They uh, lost uh, a a whole bunch of time having to go back to the tech zone and uh, replace that derailleur and as a result they are now out of the yellow jerseys uh, another team to benefit from that it was the um, the uh, toyota specialized 91 team and they are going to be in the mix tomorrow as well for a shot at the overall standings that's how uh, close it's going to be tomorrow just uh, five minutes covering the top three teams and uh, the third team is Obeli at Speed Company Racing. Now we're watching the second team in the women's, te women's race on uh, this stage coming in towards uh, the finish. And uh, it is uh, going to be uh, the 
the uh, specialized team of uh, the uh, Sofia gomez and the defending champion, and Katharina Nash. They've had a yo-yoing day today in a battle with Canada Vaz out of Bay, but it looks like they're going to take uh, second place today. And uh, not far behind them, I'm sure Canada uh, Vaz out of Bay will be uh, chasing home. But this could uh, affect their position, all depending on what happens with uh, the Erstwhile, e 4com the Seattle Coffee Co. race leaders and how much time they lose uh, today. When last we looked, they'd lost over half an hour. Um, so that could impact uh, the top three for sure. Well, it will impact the top uh, three for sure. And uh, uh, Vera Lossa and Kim LeCourt will now know they are going to be in the uh, leaders' jerseys tomorrow because over 13 minutes has elapsed since they crossed the line, and that was the deficit to Wakefield and Lille. It's likely to be a complete reshuffle mm. of that overall GC we saw going into today's stage, almost solidified, and uh, maybe, hopefully we didn't jinx it by saying so, but uh, E-Fortnet Seattle Coffee Company in the leaders' jerseys going into today's stage by 13 minutes and 53 seconds over at Kim LeCourt and Vera Lawza, Efficient Infinity Insure, and uh, 91 Songo specialized in third, 28 minutes, 15 back. Looks likely that 91 Songo specialized will shift into second, and uh, the pairing of Lacorte and Lorza will go into third. And uh, just looking at those time checks, likely that e Fortnite Seattle Coffee Company will drop down into third. Third place for them, Lacorte and Lorza in first. Look at the heavy, heavy uh, uh, pedal strokes they're having to put down to get home. This is Sofia Gomez, uh, via fan and uh, Katharina Nash riding home second on the day. Smiles from uh, the Argentine and the Czech rider. And uh, they have uh, dug very, very deep all week, particularly Katharina Nash in her debut at the Epsa Cape Epic. It's been uh, a really, really tough week, but they've held strong and go into the final day in all likelihood in second place on general classification. Another gutsy ride today. I don't know who's going to be in charge of washing at the uh, at the Specialized Factory Racing Team, but they've got a hard job to do those white jerseys. They did initially wear the orange jerseys after the prologue. They had a fantastic prologue and uh, losing that uh, lead early on in the race. And, uh, they'll be uh, looking to move up to second place. And uh, dare we say it, just dare we say it, that uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, we anything can, we can happen. Can't, we, we can't say it. Anything can happen. The only thing we can say is that anything can happen tomorrow. So no guarantees whatsoever. And the only way you're going to find out is to uh, join us tomorrow as this uh, incredible week-long drama uh, reaches its uh, culmination here at uh, Val de Vie with the grand finale. A ride from uh, here at Lawrenceford to the finish at uh, Val de Vie. Uh, it is as tough a stage as they've ridden all week. 80 kilometers, two and a half thousand, just under two and a half thousand meters of climbing. Big mountains to climb. The uh, Helderberg Mountains and then uh, over Botmas Kop and uh, down into uh, Boschendal and then across to Val de Vie. Very, very tough stage awaits tomorrow. As we hear from our second place team today. So, the second place team just came in and <laughs> Sophia, <laughs> what a date. Talk me through it. Yeah, you know, at the start you were like, only 78k and I was like, oh no, no, we are in for an epic day. I feel like we rode like freaking cockroaches. Like they would drop us on every climb and then on every descent we just went so fast and just every time could catch back on and uh, yeah, we had a little bit of a dark spot going on and then... Uh, and then, yeah, the last 20K were a little bit push, 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 and we had a lot of fun. I had fun. You had fun? I had fun, yeah, I had fun. And it's, it's an absolutely nightmare out there, just carnage. How do you, how do you maintain and stay motivated? I don't know, in some ways, like, the, the crappier weather just makes it more comical in a way. You just kind of have to laugh, you know? But uh, I don't know, I was just like enjoying, I guess, riding down the muddy corner. So it was like encouragement, just keep going, there'll be more fun on the way down. So. And did you have any idea about the drama that was unfolding around you with the mechanicals and stuff? Well, we saw the leading team with flat, 
But other than that, I, I kind of expected them to come back because it seemed like a simple flight, but I had no idea what's happening. So Yeah, they had a massive uh, mechanical with a cracked wheel. So how are you looking forward to tomorrow? I mean, we just are looking forward for some sunshine. You know, just uh, we got two hard climbs tomorrow, some good trails to get us to Val de Vie, And yeah, what an epic. It's delivering it. What a, it's throwing so much stuff at us, and uh, we're having fun. That's good to hear. Well, all the best of luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Surprise on the face of uh, Sophia Villafano, yeah. knowing the realization that, uh, in fact, the race leaders have broken a wheel. She knows innately, she knows instinctively that a cracked wheel or a broken wheel means that they won't just lose a few minutes and be able to catch on. That spells disaster, and she'll know very well that that's, a, that's at least a 10-minute plus a repair uh, with uh, having to replace that wheel at the tech zone. So uh, we saw whilst uh, they were um, having a chat with uh, Annika there that uh, Greta Steinberg and Monica Calderon have uh, crossed the line as well. Third place for the Canada Vass Arabay team today. Uh, 13 minutes and 39 down on Kim Lecourt and Vera Lossa, who are now going to ride in, them, so in the uh, CM.com orange leaders jerseys tomorrow on the final day, the grand finale into uh, Val de Vie. It's pouring here at uh, Lorenzford. Those uh, spectators, don't worry, they're not sitting in the rain. They're in the underneath the Bedouin tent in the uh, chill zone here, just uh, waiting for riders to come home. Here's a look at uh, some of the drama that uh, unfolded in the uh, CM.com women's race. Uh, Lacourt and Lossa, well, they've been attacking all the way through the uh, race and it's paid off for them uh, so far with the three stage wins. The orange jerseys, well, today their task was really just to try and stay with the uh, red jerseys of uh, Lacourt and Lossa. And Lacourt and Lossa were certainly doing exactly what they were meant to do as uh, they knew they had one job to do, and that was to put as much pressure on the leader's jersey wearers as possible. And uh, just a bit of pressure some in the uh, in the lat in the early part of the race uh, can not just uh, cause any cracks in the in the firepower of the uh, pairing of Lil and Wakefield, but uh, with pressure like that, it can also force an error. Well, uh, they were. Hammering up that first long, long climb. The stage was shortened by five kilometers. A couple of the uh, big climbs that on exposed windy areas were taken out for rider safety, uh, but that didn't lessen the challenge today. The weather made this one of the hardest challenges these riders have ever faced, as you've heard many of them say. As they dropped down into the uh, first single track, it was uh, Gomez who had a Nash, then the orange jerseys of Wakefield and Lille, and up front, Lossa and uh, Le Court all together. This is what it's been like for uh, pretty much all week. The top three teams just uh, duking it out and uh, pushing as hard as they can to uh, take advantage of uh, each other's weaknesses. Well, Kim, uh, at least uh, Katarina Nash and uh, Sofia Vivafan uh, lost touch with the lead group on the climbs. And Monica Calderon and uh, Greta Steinberg of uh, Canada were just behind them here, pushing hard to try and uh, catch the uh, specialized pair. But at this stage on these muddy, slushy, uh, greasy surfaces, it was uh, Wakefield and uh, Lil who were sitting behind uh, the red jerseys, as they should be doing on uh, the uh, stage, because they did, did need to do nothing more than just mark the uh, red jerseys, because they were 13 minutes ahead of them, so they had nothing uh, really to push to gain by pushing too hard and uh, trying to gain time on them but uh, you get an idea of how treacherous these conditions were it's dark up there the rain is falling the mud is uh, everywhere and uh, slowly but surely uh, Wakefield and Lil started to lose a bit of contact with uh, Lossa and uh, Lacourt but they managed to close the gap again as you heard uh, the uh, Sofia Gomez very fan say they were uh, yo-yoing on and off this uh, lead group uh, time and time again on the descents they were making up time and then losing it on uh, the climbs and this kind of to and fro if you've got the uh, the, ch the aggressive pairing of Lorza and Lacourt on the front and uh, the yo-yoing on and off the back of that uh, of really the lead pace uh, can start to play a role and cause a bit of fatigue um, do know that uh, Wakefield and Lil did have a plan early going on just to defend ride them ride within themselves but uh, there's just something that happens in racing, the dynamics of racing that can force an error. Whether or not it was an error 
or whether it was just plain old bad luck breaking a wheel. This was the moment that we knew that uh, the race lead was under serious threat. We saw how long it took them to figure out that this this issue was almost irreparable, having to put the wheel back into the bike and pedal the rest of the way. Pedal to the tech zone for the 37 kilometer mark is where it happened, all the way to the 41 kilometer mark where the tech zone awaited with an extra wheel. Uh, Canada Vas, uh Arabe, Monica Calderon and Greta Steinberg, meanwhile, were then uh, sensing an opportunity to get onto the podium again. And this pair, Vera Lossa and Candice and uh, Kim Lacourt, were sensing an opportunity to take another stage win. And uh, perhaps not even at this stage entertaining thoughts of the overall lead uh, because they weren't entirely aware. They knew that there was a cracked wheel, but they weren't aware of the severity and how long it would take. But they would have known that uh, that cracked wheel does take a long time to uh, repair. You heard Kim say she went to Vera, I think, say she went into the same hole that Amy went into, but didn't suffer the uh, same uh, issues that uh, Amy Wakefield's bike suffered. That is the luck of this Absa Cape Epic. And uh, you take it and you ride it. And this pair have ridden it absolutely fantastically today gunning it as hard as they could to continue opening what they knew was a lead. Kim Lacourt on the front here and uh, Vera Lossa certainly suffering a little bit but uh, they were absolutely determined to eke out every second possible on these muddy tough uh, trails and Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa took the stage win and uh, they weren't to know that that stage win would also earn them the overall leaders jerseys. The uh, 91 Songo Specialized pair, Katharina Nash and Sofia Gomez Viafan, riding themselves into second on the day and in all likelihood second on the, the uh, general classification once again. They were the leaders a week ago, just about a week ago in the prologue and a delight for Nash and for Gomez Viafan. They have been on a journey. So have this pair. Canada Vas Sarabe, a very slow start to the week, but they've got stronger and stronger on the podium for the second time in two days. And uh, they uh, put together a really solid ride today, yo-yoing together with Specialized on and off uh, and eventually finishing in third place. So the uh, stage six results look like this. Lacourt and Loza, 12 minutes and 57 ahead of Gomez, Viafan and Nash with Steinberg and Calderon. Uh, just under 16 minutes behind uh, the leaders, but not too far behind, uh, exactly three minutes behind uh, Gomez, Diafan and Nash. What a day we've had here at uh, Lawrenceford uh, Estate, uh, the likes of which we haven't seen for many, many years in the 19-year history of the app. So Cape Epic, certainly weather-wise, but more particularly uh, how this uh, day has uh, affected the, the general classification in both the men's and women's races. We've seen a change in leadership here, and it sets up a final day, the grand finale from Lawrenceford to uh, Val de Vie over 80 kilometers, 2,400 meters of climbing. And there are three teams in the men's race within six minutes of each other. And uh, the defending champions are in third. We know what they did a year ago. Can they do it again on the final day to Val de Vie? Well, there's only one place to find out right here. In the women's race, uh, Candice Lill and Amy Wakefield have lost the overall lead. It now sits with an all-African pair the Namibian uh, Vera Lossa and the Mauritian uh, champion Kim Lacourt. A dramatic day here has seen so much action and there's still more to come with one day to go in this wonderful untamed African mountain bike race. It's the race that measures all and it certainly did measure all today in every possible uh, manner, mental, physical and mechanical. We hope you've enjoyed the drama. We've got the final chapter of this wonderful drama tomorrow right here at Lawrence. We start here. We finish at Val de Vie in Pal. It's the grand finale.